First National Bank of Lindsay is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Whether you're looking for a business loan, personal loan, or a certain type of deposit product, chances are we have what you're looking for. First National Bank, locally owned and operated, insured by FDIC, equal housing lender. Curb your hunger at a new location right here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. From the owners of El Unico Taco Truck comes Casa 13. Casa 13 will bring a delicious variety of Mexican food. Stay tuned to their Facebook for sneak peeks. Following their grand opening on January 4th, Casa 13 will be located at 110 Northeast 4th Street right here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. Go Leopards! For all your construction needs, Give Brad Taylor a call with BNS Construction at 1 405 428 0039. BNS Construction specializes in concrete pads, sidewalks, and metal buildings of all sizes. Call Brad today for a free estimate. The crew at BNS Construction would like to wish the Leopards a safe and successful season. Go, Lindsay! For all your oil field electrical needs, call Michael Chirac with SOS Electrical. SOS is a family owned business that specializes in oil field, industrial, and commercial electrical construction and maintenance. No job is too big, no job is too small. Give SOS a call at 1 405 428 1944 today. Good luck, Leopards! For over 68 years, Winans Funeral Home in Maysville, Oklahoma, has been serving families in the area during their greatest time of need, the loss of a loved one. We treat each family as if they were our own and consider it a true calling to minister to each and every family that calls upon us. We don't take caring for your loved one and your family lightly. Your care is important to us. Call on us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where our staff can assist your family with immediate need with the loss of a loved one, pre-need arrangement planning, pre-need burial insurance, along with questions regarding funeral burial trust accounts, Veterans Administration, and Social Security benefits questions. Myself, John W. Williams, Teresa, and Claudia are well experienced in these areas and will be more than happy to assist you in any way we can. Winans Funeral Home in Maysville, where you are family. This is Dr. Matt Shelton with Lindsay Family Dentistry. I'm a 1997 graduate of Lindsay High School and have been practicing dentistry in Lindsay since 2006. We welcome you to come to our dental practice so we can help you and your family with all your dental needs. We offer dental services for everyone at every age, from braces to aligners to crowns, bridges, dentures, and implants. Give us a call today at 405-756-4093 or stop by at 102 Southwest 7th Street and let us give you the healthy, beautiful smile you've always dreamed of. American Exchange Bank, right here in Lindsay, is a locally owned and operated community bank that believes in just that, you, a community of fellow leopards. We love our customers. We feel very grateful for each one. So if you are looking for a safe place to put your money, need help achieving that next dream project, or are simply looking for a different banking experience, give us a call at 405-756-3101. We look forward to serving you each day. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. The team at Streamline Services contributes a great deal of their success to hard work, experience, and above all, a positive health and safety protocol. There is every reason they should be your next phone call for any of your oil and gas swabbing needs. Give Austin Smith a call today at 1-405-756-7763 to see how Streamline Services can help with your project while ensuring safety and professionalism without sacrificing quality work being done. Everyone at Streamline Services wishes the best of luck to everyone at Lindsay Public Schools this year. Go Leopards! Are you tired of doing laundry? Give Sunshine Suds a call and let them do it for you. Sunshine Suds will wash and fold your clothes and they also offer dry cleaning. Sunshine Suds also does quilting and alterations. Load up that laundry basket and head to Sunshine Suds located at 107 Southwest 2nd Street in Lindsay, Oklahoma or give them a call at 405-756-2850. First National Bank of Lindsay is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Whether you're looking for a business loan, personal loan, or a certain type of deposit product, chances are we have what you're looking for. 
First National Bank, locally owned and operated, insured by FDIC, equal housing lender. BC Factoring and Finance is a local, family-owned finance company. We assist small businesses with flexible and creative financing solutions to meet their cash flow needs. Call us to discuss ways we can help free up your time to focus on building your business. Visit us online at bcfactoring.com or give us a call at 405-259-2104. Go, Lindsay! If you need local trash pickup with quality service at a fair price, call Red Dirt Waste Services today at 580-432-5697. Red Dirt Waste Services is locally owned and operated, offering household, residential, and light commercial trash pickup in Lindsay and surrounding areas, including Ellick, Bradley, Bray Doyle, Cox City, Elmore City, and Foster. Red Dirt Waste Services does household cleanouts too, and they offer 96-gallon poly carts and dumpsters, bagged, loose, or or heavy items, doesn't matter, they'll come get it. Red Dirt Waste Services even offers valet service, so you don't even have to take your trash to the curb. Schedule your weekly pickup today by calling 580-432-5697. Stop paying more than you have to for quality, dependable, and locally owned trash pickup. Call Red Dirt Waste Services at 580-432-5697. That's 580-432-5697. El Unico Taco Truck is ready to curb your hunger. The traveling taco truck has locations in Lindsay and Blanchard and is available for catering services. You can contact El Unico to book your next event at 405-760-0821. El Unico enjoys supporting all of our leopards with their Taco Tuesdays. Reach out to El Unico for your next event. Hughes Heat and Air is a family-owned business that serves Lindsay and surrounding areas. Hughes Heat and Air provides service for residential and commercial jobs, including simple repairs and new installations. Hugh and his crew take pride in providing professional, efficient, and reliable work at affordable rates. For your next heat and air project, give you a call at 1-405-756-6399. Good luck, Lindsay. Capturing all your special moments is such a blessing to me from running down the ball field to walking down the aisle. Call or text Photography Blessings by Lacey for all your photography needs. 405-428-0305. Go Leopards and Leopardettes. Hey Leopard fans, we at American Exchange Bank are excited for another year where we get to continue our support of Lindsay Leopard Athletics. Join us in cheering on our Leopards or catch all the action right here on KBLP Live. American Exchange Bank at 402 South Main has been the bank for the Leopards for nearly 100 years. Come see us if you're looking for a different banking experience. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. At American, we are Leopards supporting other Leopards. Tabor's Drug has been locally owned and operated for almost 60 years and has employed many leopards and leopardettes. We are very proud to be a supporter of our sports teams. At Tabor's Drug, your prescriptions are filled with care and accuracy, and our pharmacist is available for free consulting concerning your prescriptions bought at Tabor's. We also offer interpreters for our Spanish-speaking friends. We are a very friendly store that has that small town feel. You can reach us at 405-756-4511. Come and see us. Car Care Center is your hometown auto repair shop right here in Lindsay, America at 211 West Cherokee, providing complete automotive repair on foreign and domestic cars and trucks. So if your ride needs repair or service, Car Care Center can get it done. Whether it's radiators, mufflers, brakes, or diagnostics, Car Care Center can handle whatever you need to get back on the road. Call Car Care Center at 405-756-1447. That's 756-1447. Available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's Car Care Center at 211 West Cherokee in Lindsay. Clements Insurance provides insurance coverage to best suit your needs. We offer auto, home, farm, life, and business policies. Come by 109 West Chickasaw or call 405-756-2253. Clements Insurance is carrying on the tradition to satisfy you. So come see me, Keith, or Beth. Go Lindsay. Whether you want to promote your business or unite your team, depend on Design It. 
Locally owned and operated, we are dedicated to offering the service you need to give you the results you deserve. We are committed to providing you with custom screen printing, embroidery, custom graphic designs, logo designs, and we have a creative arts department and an in-house artist who can take your idea and give it our professional touch with custom art services. Contact us today. Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome inside Leopard Arena. It is playoff basketball here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. The Leopards and Leopardettes on the home floor as uh, they hit the first round of the uh, Class 3A Area 4 Regional Tournament. And these are winner's bracket games here going on tonight as the Lindsay Leopardettes are getting set to take on uh, the Lady Royals of CCS. The boys will take on OCS. Coming up uh, after this one, we'll talk a little more about that game here in a little bit. But uh, my name is Greg Peary. Glad you're along here with us as uh, uh, these two teams uh, play for a chance to uh, skip tomorrow and go straight to Saturday night and play for a regional championship and a guaranteed berth in the area tournament over at Ada. I'm alongside the Glenn Shoemake. Glenn, yep. uh, great time of year. Oh. Uh, I love playoffs, and yeah. uh, this one's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, the playoffs are, are always fun. You never know what's going to happen. There's upsets galore. Uh, I know uh, you look at on paper both of the Lindsay teams uh, uh, would not be favored in Vegas odds. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Is, is, a, is a good way to put it. But uh, they both have some really stiff competition. But anything can happen. I, I have seen it. I've, I've lived both sides of it. And uh, so you still got to go out there and play. And I think one of the cool things about it is coaching comes into so much of it uh, becomes even more important. So the adjustments that they make are, are going to be, in, you know, invaluable. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it really uh, the strategies and, and what you come up with. We're going to see probably some strategy from both these teams. Again, you mentioned that uh, if you put the Vegas odds on this game, the uh, the chances of uh, the Leopardettes uh, coming up with an upset here tonight are probably uh, uh, pretty big odds, but that's something that. Uh, so the uh, trying to get uh, that swung in your favor, you may see some different things thrown out here, and yeah. I think for sure we're going to see the boys try something. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, it, it is. Coaching has a lot to do with it. You're taking on a team that's ranked number five in the state in Class 3A in the uh, Lady Royals. They're 20 and four on the season uh, coming into the game tonight. And again, they're on a roll. They've got talent all the way down the roster. Uh, pick your poison. Uh, there's a lot of names on here that uh, uh, you'll, we'll call uh, all night long. But it's again, the coaching really does have a big part of that. Yeah, it, it is. And uh, but you know, the players do too. Uh, I, I tell this story quite often about a, a mediocre team I had at Alex. I mean, we 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 won more than we lost, but. We had to go play the uh, number five ranked team in the state in the first round of regionals. And uh, I, I prayed about it, what defense to run. And I'm driving up there, and God threw five bugs up there <laughs> in, the, in the form of a 2-3 zone. Oh, we okay. run a 2-3 zone that night, and their best player that just shot threes lights out, uh, and he would back up. If you covered him, he would back up. And uh, he was 0 for 18 from three-point range that night, and we won by three points. Wow. Uh, so anything yeah. can happen. Anything can happen. That's absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Well, again, the Leopardettes are coming off of uh, that win over Comanche, a big, com uh, I mean, impressive win for the Leopardettes. Uh, held Comanche without a field goal through three quarters of that game. It wasn't until – uh, Coach Cater had pretty much emptied the bench that uh, Comanche came up with three field goals there in the fourth quarter. But 42-13, the Leopardettes win. Uh, nobody even in double figures for the Leopardettes because I think everybody that played got in the scoring column. But Leslie Wilmot led the way with nine points, and uh, uh, Maddie McGowan was right behind with her with eight. And all of those were in the first half. So yeah. uh, the starters uh, really did a number. Again, it was 12 nothing Leopardettes at the end of one. It was 24-3 at halftime. All three of those points were from the free throw line for the uh, uh, 
uh, Lady Indians, and then they would have scored one point in the third quarter. They were one for two at the free throw line. So a dominant win for the Leopardettes. And uh, so you've got that confidence, and you get to take on uh, this uh, Lady Royals team on your home floor. That's got to help yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. And if that, that defense was the best defense I've seen them play all year, I, I mean, uh, very, very proud of how they played defense for, for three and a half quarters. It just helped. They not only helped really, really well, but they helped the helper really, really well. And when you can do that and rebound like they rebound, uh, you know, it, that, that, that was, was the, the reason that it was such a dominant win because uh, even though we didn't have just a blowout scoring night, uh, the ability to shut the other team down like they did uh, really, really made it lopsided. So, uh, yeah, if, if they can play defense like that tonight, I'm excited to see to see what they can do and against a highly ranked team. I told uh, Coach Cater when I was talking to him, and I've watched some uh, some film on these girls. And again, they've got talent all the way down the bench. I found out that we're going to have a starter on the floor for them tonight. That I didn't see start in either one of the games that I watched. So mm -hmm. obviously, Coach Threlkill's got all kinds of talent on this team from uh, from CCS, but. Uh, I said, you know, the two things I think from that I did see from Leverett is that CCS has got fabulous defense. They play the passing lanes very well, and uh, they play Dixon. And the first five offensive possessions that Dixon had were two passes, and on the second pass it was stolen, and CCS got a breakaway layup out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I told him, you got to take care of the basketball tonight. Leopardettes cannot turn the ball over 20 times, and that's what yeah. we've been doing. Uh, and the second thing is they're going to have to hit shots. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to make sure you take good shots, and you're going to have to hit them because CCS is going to. You yeah. know, the defense, like I agree with you. If we play the defense that we played the other night, uh, I, I like our chances of at least hanging tough with them. So mm -hmm. we'll see, see how that works. But, again, this one's going to be a good one. The boys uh, with a very, very exciting one-point win against Comanche uh, last Saturday night to claim that district championship, and uh, they will uh, they'll have to take on the number one team in the state tonight on the boys' side of the bracket in Class 3A, and that's the Saints from OCS, and uh, uh, it is a tall, tall tale for them to uh, uh, be able to come up with that one, and we'll kind of talk that one through as we get to in between games. But uh, the Leopards, again, that exciting 45-44 win, come up with a, a one-point lead less than a minute ago to go in the game. Had a chance to push it to three, missed a couple of free throws. And Comanche uh, really, I guess, rolls the dice and goes for a final shot and ends up with an offensive charge called uh, that to gave the ball back to the Leopards with just a second and a half to go, and they were able to run it out for the win. But uh, uh, they got 14 points from Brody Ramming. They had uh, nine from Creed Taylor. He had three threes in the game. Uh, had eight from Bryson Watson in the ball game. All of those were in the second half. But, again, they're going to have to shoot well tonight. They're going to take care of the ball. But I think the the, the bugaboo for the Leopards tonight is going to be taking on a guy by the name of Luke Gray, who is a 6'8", 225-pound senior and can shoot threes with the best of any guard in this in high school, uh, as well as the fact that he's 6'8", pack three guys around him, he don't care. Uh, yeah. He's the uh, star tight end on their football team. He's got scholarship offers for football. He's got scholarship offers from D1 schools all over the country for his basketball and football. Mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of athleticism on this OCS team. So, again, the Leopards are going to have to have some coaching magic in there, and we're, I think we'll see some of that coming up tonight too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, when you play a team that that is is that overpowering, I mean, they, they beat Millwood that, uh, and Millwood – Triple teamed him and yeah. couldn't stop couldn't him. Couldn't stop him. You know, uh, it, you you would be you, you would not be very smart if you just tried to to go right at him and and run up and down the floor with him. Uh, so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, you know the the coaching strategy there. I, I've I've talked with uh, uh, with with Coach Terry and uh, I think. Uh, I think he's got something up his sleeve. Well, we'll see. We'll talk a little more about the boys coming up, but we're just about ready to get this one underway here in Lindsay, and then we're going to uh, hang around for the National Anthem tonight. I think we're going to have our uh, 
uh, faculty from Lindsay High School will be singing our national anthem tonight. So we're going to uh, see if we can't uh, tune in for that as we have our national anthem tonight. But uh, again, this is the uh, Class 3A Area 4 Regional Winner's Bracket game between the Lindsay Leopardettes and the Lady Royals of Community Christian School. Greg Peary, Glenn Schumach here uh, courtside. We've got uh, J.D. Scruggs up there on the live stream. Andrew ESPN Lion. Oh, I'm sorry. ESPN Plus Lion up on the camera. You got to subscribe and, to him now. You got to subscribe to him now. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Kevin Scruggs. Jeter is up there. I'm sure Adam is up there as well. And, of course, uh, we have to be sure and thank Brianna Miller back at our studios handling the FM broadcast. And, of course, uh, CeCe Lyon and Paige Sutherland rounding out our KBLP live team. We couldn't do it without any of them. Well, you might could do it without me. But uh, <laughs> we hear the strains of Oklahoma wind up, and we're going to send it down to public address announcer Doyle Gretman. This is Brandon Cottrell, pastor at Calvary Baptist Church. Just want to take a moment and invite you to come worship with us this Sunday. Classes begin. At Bow your heads with me, please. Jesus, thank you for this day, Lord, and thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. I just thank you for this day you've supplied us with, Lord, and I thank you for letting us be able to come here and play this sport, Lord. I pray that we play in a way that glorifies you, Lord, and I pray that we have safe travels home, and I pray that you send an angel to watch over us, Lord, and to pray that no one gets hurt. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This time, we have a special treat for you tonight. We have Miranda Edwards, high school history teacher here at Lindsay. Melanie Lawrence, our middle school counselor. Justin Davis, our high school vocal director. And John Inman, our high school principal. They will lead us in our national anthem. Oh, say can you see Tell you what, Glenn, it doesn't get any better than that, in my no. opinion. Yeah, they do a great job That's every a time they do it. Fantastic job. Yep. So we are about ready to get this one underway. The Lindsay Leopardettes and the Lady Royals of CCS, Community Christian School. Let's get to the visitors from Community Christian. Again, coming in 20 and 4 on the season, ranked number five in the state in Class 3A. Number 11 is Harper Hot Sox. She is a 5'8 sophomore. Number four is Laney Venables, 5'8 freshman. Yes. Actually, 11 does not stop. She's just actually back there waiting on the starters. No. So let's go. Laney Venables, the 5'8 freshman, starts. Number 10 is Presley Hot Sox, the 5'8 junior. Number 14 is Ava Bell. She's a 5'11 sophomore. Number 15, Sadie Thrillkill. Thrillkill, a 5'8", a junior. And round out the starting five with number 24, Hope Martin. Martin is a 5'10", junior. 
Martin, Thrill Kill, Bell, Hartsock, and Venables, the starting five for the head coach of the Lady Royals. Chad Thrillkill, he is assisted by Braden Thrillkill, Melanie O'Reilly, and Becky Mitchell. Yes. And for the Lindsay Leopardettes, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. No, go yep. ahead. The Leopardettes 12 and 12 on the season as they come in off of that win over Comanche to claim the district championship. And they'll start this way. At guard, a 5'5 junior, number one is Gentry Wilmont. At forward will be a 5'10 junior. That's number five, Maddie McGowan. Also at forward will be a 5'8 junior, number 10, that is Leslie Wilmot. At guard, a 5'5 junior, number 22, that is Cannon Russell. And then to round out the starting five for the Leopardettes, a 5'4 senior, number 24, Eris De Valenciano. So Valenciano Russell, Leslie, Maddie, and Gentry, the starting five for the head coach of the Leopardettes, Brian Cater. He is assisted by Johnny Dodd. And yes, for those of you that are wondering, Laney Venables, the freshman starter for CCS, is in fact the daughter of the head coach of the Oklahoma Center football team, Brent Venables. Yeah, we. I asked Tommy Ferguson if he had any VIP requests earlier, and <laughs> uh, he said not yet. And uh, just uh, casting a quick gaze, I do not see Mr. Venables, uh, Coach Venables, in the stands. So uh, I'm sure. If he walked in, there would be quite a uh, uh, entourage yeah, following him a, around. A yeah. ruckus, uh, big, <laughs> big crowd yeah. gathering. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he may be watching this right now. Yeah, Venables actually controls the tip in the backcourt. Presley Hartsock has the handle, picked up by Russell. She crosses the timeline, right wing to Venables. Dribbles to the wing, gets the handoff over there to Martin. Works back up top for Hartsock on the dribble. Comes back over to Venable's right wing into the corner. Hope Martin down the baseline. Turned away by the Gentry. Turned it back up top. Trail kill. Surveys. Looks for somebody to pass off to. Good. Good. Denied defense there by the Leopardettes. Great screen underneath, but a blocked shot on the first attempt from the Leopardettes. And Leslie Wilmot comes away with the rebound. Yeah, made him take a tough shot. Great defense right there we talked about. The defense in the pregame, if we can, we got to play great defense. Gentry, right wing, gets it to Leslie in the short corner. Tried to go inside the McGowan, but threw it away. Here comes Martin, gives it up to Venables down the baseline. Got around the girl, put an easy one in. That's a nice move from Venables down the baseline. Puts yeah. Lady Rules up an early 2-0 lead here. Lenciano yeah. back over to Russell. Russell penetrates to the right elbow, out into the corner, three ball on the way. It's a narrow ball, but underneath, Leslie Wilmot with the rebound, and she's fouled on the putback attempt. So the CCS foul comes on a number, looks like, is that 24? Mm -hmm. Hope Martin's first. Team's first in the quarter. Actually called it on 14. Mm -hmm. So it's almost, foul, Ava it's Bell. almost like 24. It is, yeah. And Leslie Wilmot at the line is short with her first free throw attempt. Bell checks out. Number 12, Kate Hollingsworth, the 5'9 junior, checks in. Second free throw attempt from Leslie Wilmot on the way. That one is good. It's 2-1, CCS on top. 6.45 left to go here in the first as Hartsock will bring it up. Works right, sends it over on the right wing to Thrill Kill. Back up top to Hartsock. Goes left. Looks for the back door. Left for that to have it covered. Gets it back over on the left wing for Martin. Inside, Wilmot nearly comes away with the steal. Martin gets it back, splits a double team, and lays it in. A nice move right there. A hard straight line drive. You know, a good give and go. And got the basket. Russell back to Valenciano. Out in the left corner for Leslie. And again, a pass tip, another turnover. And here comes Thrill Kill, passes tip. Russell tries to save it, but can't. So it'll stay with the Lady Royals. And 
Kate Hollingsworth immediately checks out. 23, Annabelle Mitchell, the 5'9 junior, checks in. But we will have a timeout on the floor called by the Leopardettes. 6.07 left in the first. 4-1, Lady Royals, when we come back after this time out here on KBLP Live. This is Brandon Cottrell, pastor at Calvary Baptist Church. Just want to take a moment and invite you to come worship with us this Sunday. Classes begin at 9.30 and worship follows at 10.45. We have something for all ages each Wednesday night. Meals begin at 5.30 and Bible study follows at 6.30. We would love to have you come be a part of our worship. We are located 410 West Chickasaw. Come join us. Lady Royals basketball under their own basket coming out of the timeout. Thrill kill will trigger on the left side of the rim. Out in the corner, Leslie Wilmot with the steal. But she can't hang on to it. Excuse me, that was Gentry Wilmot with yeah, the steal. Yeah, she stepped out of bounds right there before she could throw it back in. But again, good hustle from Gentry. Yes. The back door cut. Hartsock lost it in the lane. That's <laughs> Finally get a jump ball, and then the Leopardettes will have the possession arrow. Yeah, I'm shocked they didn't call a uh, walk right. because you rolled over. Yep. Whenever you roll over with the ball, uh, that is that is in the rule book that that is a travel. Leopardettes will break the trap. Left wing, Leslie. Trapped over there. Gets it to the short corner to Gentry. To McGowan underneath. Puts it up mm. and in. Leopardettes back within one, 4-3, 540 left to go here in the first. Hartsock over to throw kill on the right wing. Back up top to Hartsock. Back door cut, throw kill up and in. Got to cover that back door. Back to a three-point Lady Royal lead. Russell on the Hansel. Tries to get around Hartsock, can't get it done, but they're going to call a reach-in foul on Hartsock. Presley's first will be the team's second. Yeah, and Hartsock's kind of the motor that makes him go. She is so athletic and quick. Uh, she'll pick your pocket in a heartbeat if you're not careful. So they got her on the foul, got her hand caught inside there that time. Russell drives up, gives it to Leslie at the top of the key, flips it to McGowan, three ball on the way. Good! Oh. Maddie for three, and the Leopardettes have tied the game with 5.05 left to go in the first. Hartsock again looks to penetrate, sends it to Thrill Kill out on the wing, back to Hartsock, dribbles to the free throw line, down the right side of the lane, Venables down the baseline, sends it out into the left corner. Mitchell to Martin, back out to Mitchell, tries to drive in on Gentry, sends it up top, Hartsock for three, it's an air ball. Venables saves it, but not before she stepped on the end line. That'll be the second turnover on CCS. And Leopardettes had the ball, a tie game at six with 4.40 left here in the first. Yeah, playing great defense, you know. Uh, and we talked about that. We've had a couple of turnovers, but uh, big shots by Maddie McGowan. Maddie turns around top of the key looking for cutters. Finally gets it to Valenciano. She'll reverse back up top, hand it to, to Russell, and then Russell is going to get foul number two called on Presley Hartsock on the blocking foul. Third team foul. And she will go have a seat as Harper Hot Sock. Hot Sock will replace her. Yeah, a big loss for CCS to lose their, their uh, ball play, their playmaker. Russell turns down to three, dribbles to the top of the key. Keeps her dribble alive, backs out, and they'll reset. Valenciano right wing. Lobby inside intended for McGowan goes out of bounds. The Leopardettes with their third turnover. Yeah, a good idea. Poor execution kind of deal on that one, you know, trying to get it inside to Maddie, who's had the hot hand, but just a little too stiff with that pass. Harper sends it right wing over to Thrill Kill. Back up top to Venables. Venables tried to go inside to Martin, knocked away by Gentry. Martin got it back. And then we'll have a hand check from behind called on Gentry Wilmot. Her first is the team's first here in the quarter. So Harper Hartsock, I, my apologies, will uh, inbound from the baseline. Got it to Venables in the low post, sends it back out to Harper, turns over with the defense from Russell, and that's turnover number three on the Lady Royals. Yeah, again, uh, 
great defense. How many times are we going to say that tonight? <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, we've probably said it ten times already, and we're, we're just over halfway through this first quarter. Ava Bell, number 14, checks in for the Lady Royals. Russell brings it across, dribbles left side, gives to McGowan, back up top, Leslie. Right wing for Gentry. They screen to get McGowan open, they cover her up. Valenciano, top of the key for three, short. Rebound, loose, Leslie comes up with it. McGowan right wing, dribbles inside, and a steal by Amber Mitchell. Gives it to Martin, Martin's catch fire three. He barely grazes the front of the iron and goes out of bounds. Both teams with four turnovers now. Yeah. Uh, so Valenciano gets it to Russell as she'll bring it across the timeline. Up top to Leslie. Gets it back to McGowan. Run off the three-point line and turns it over. And the run out, Leslie will foul. Ava Bell, and Bell will head to the free throw line as Leslie picks up her first, team second in the quarter, but that one on the shot will put Bell at the line for two. We're still tied at six, 3.04 left to go. We've gone two minutes here without either team scoring since it was tied at six with 5.05 left, and Bell got a kind wow. bounce off the top of the backboard, and it drops in. Wow, I haven't seen that kind of motion in a long time. Puts the Lady Royals back up by one. Second one, rims out no good. McGowan with the rebound for the Leopardettes. Three minutes left here in the first. Russell on the handle. Royals have backed up into a 2-3 zone now. Valenciano left wing. Back out to McGowan on the wing. Back to Valenciano. She'll work across the top of the key to the right wing for Russell. Back to McGowan on the wing, into the corner, Leslie. Leslie back to McGowan, way out on that wing. She's going to push it back up. They are they are pushing that 2-3 zone way out along beyond the three-point line. Yeah, they are. They're putting ball pressure on it out of the zone. Russell right wing, splits a double team, gets to the baseline, but has to turn it back away. Good stop there from Bell. 2.15 left. Leopard, that's a run. Nearly a minute off on this possession. Being patient, looking for a good shot. McGowan up top, Valenciano. Quickly to Russell, left wing. Back up to McGowan. Three ball on the way from Manny is good. 9-7, Leopardettes by two. We've got 155 left to go. Harper Hartsock brings it across the timeline. Works left, reverses back to her right. Flips it behind her to Mitchell. Back over to Martin, left side. Martin with Gentry on her, gets around her, gets it back out into the corner. Three ball is an air ball, but backside rebound for Martin. Martin into the lane, back to Mitchell. Mitchell looks to penetrate. Back out to Martin, top of the key. Back out to Mitchell, left wing. We're a minute 25 left in the quarter. Mitchell cannot get around Leslie. Back up top to Harper. And Martin's going to pick up. Foul number two on Gentry Wilmot as she put the forearm in her back. And that'll be the third team foul and foul number two on Gentry Wilmot. And checking in for the Lady Royals will be number 12, Kate Hollingsworth. And they just show, uh, they called that on McGowan. Okay. My apologies then. Gallons first. Martin, the pass intended for Mitchell, knocked out of bounds, last touched by the Leopardettes. It'll stay with the Lady Royals. Mitchell to inbound on the baseline. Got it to Martin out on that right wing. Inside, Hollingsworth sends it back to Martin, and Martin will get around that screen. It'll be called an offensive foul on Harper Hartsock. That's her first, the team's fourth in the quarter. And with a minute nine left, the Leopardettes have the ball and a two-point lead. Yeah, and uh, will we hold for the last shot? I don't know. <laughs> Doubtful, but Valenciano back to Russell, works to the top of the key. Right side, Gentry, back to Russell. 
Drives down, back to Vinciano, stolen away. And in the lane, Mitchell will get an easy one. Six turnover on the Leopardettes, and Mitchell ties the game at nine. Yeah, Russ. Mitchell's been a real thorn in our side so yep. far this game. I said I watched two or three of their games, some of the highlights, and they are really good at playing those passing lanes and getting those steals. They anticipate passes about as good as any team I watched. Leslie, short corner, brings it out to the corner, comes back to Gentry on the wing. She'll drive in. Russell from the right elbow. No, mm. too strong. Rebound for Bell. 14 seconds left. Harper will bring it up. Got around Russell into the lane, throws it down to an easy basket for Ava Bell. And it'll be 11-9 as Russell puts up a half-court shot Ooh. that was on line and just short. But I tell you what, I'm impressed with the Leopardette effort in that first quarter, even though CCS has a two-point lead at the end of one. 11-9 our score. We'll send it over to J.D. We're back with more live coverage of Leopardette basketball presented by the First National Bank after this timeout on KBLP Live. For all your tax services, contact Grant and Katie Johnson, CPA. Grant and Katie are certified public accountants that provide full-service accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, and tax services. With two offices, one located at 600 Southeast 4th Street in Lindsay, Oklahoma, and another at 313 North Walnut in Pauls Valley, Grant and Katie are ready to meet your CPA needs. Give Grant or Katie a call at 405-238-2727 and set up your appointment today. First National Bank of Lindsay is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Whether you're looking for a business loan, personal loan, or a certain type of deposit product, chances are we have what you're looking for. First National Bank, locally owned and operated, insured by FDIC, equal housing lender. We'll get ready to start the second quarter. It's 11-9, Lady Royals with a two-point lead. They will also get the ball to start this second quarter. They will send Bell, Mitchell, Martin, Hollingsworth and Harper Hartsock back out to start the second quarter. Leopardettes leave their starting five out there. Harper Hartsock having trouble getting the ball in, so Martin comes back to get it. Sends it left wing to Mitchell. Back up to Harper over right side. Hollingsworth, the back door cut from Martin. Ball is stolen away. Turnover number five on the Lady Royals. Linciano left wing from Russell. Gives it right back to McGowan. Back up top, Valenciano. She'll send it back over right wing, Russell. McGowan into the short corner. Leslie can't get the roll. Gentry can't come up with a loose ball. It'll be a jump ball, and the Leopardettes have the possession arrow. So Leopardettes will bring it in under their own basket. Laney Venables checks back in. Kate Hollingsworth checks out. Gentry to inbound. They've got Cannon out in the right corner. A little late getting it to her, though, as Mitchell came and ran her off the line. And they'll reset. Lady Royal stay in that 2-3 zone. Luciano high left side. Back to Russell into the right corner. Gentry looks for Leslie, back to Gentry. Fires a three over the top of the backboard. Could not get it to drop back down. And that'll go with turnover number seven on the Leopardettes. Harper Hartsock brings it up. Sends it to Martin at the top of the key. Martin dribbles down, sends it to Mitchell over on the left side. Works around the screen from Hartsock. Venables takes it down inside, falls down, loses it out of bounds, turnover. It'll be Leopardette basketball off of turnover number six on the Lady Royals. Still 11-9, Leopardettes down by two. We're nearly a minute and a half into this second quarter. Neither team has scored. Linciano back to Russell, draws to the elbow, sends it out to Gentry. Leslie short corner, skip it back up to Russell, top of the key. 
Over left side, Valenciano. Back to Russell. Back to Valenciano. Three ball from Aris. Day is good. 12-11. Leopardettes by one. Martin right wing into the right corner. Three ball is short. Martin grabs the rebound, though. But Leslie shuts her off from getting down there with it. Inside, nice move, and the left-hand layup up and good from Bell. Yeah, that was a nice move. Took Maddie left and then spun back right and knocked it off the glass with that left hand. Lady Royals back up by one, 13-12. 5.35 left to go here in the first half. Lenciano left wing. Into the left corner for Leslie. Inside Gentry, left elbow McGowan. Jumper too strong, but Cannon with the loose ball. And then she will get fouled. Nice hustle from Cannon Russell to come up with that one. And the foul on Harper Hartsock is her second. First team foul here in the second quarter against CCS. McGowan gets it on the right wing. Back to Gentry in the corner. Leslie gives it back up top. McGowan for three. It's wide right. Harper Hartsock with the miss. Ahead to Martin right wing. She'll dribble to the top of the key. Goes to the left side of the lane, works it back out to the wing, back up top, gives it to Venables. Venables drives down, cut off by old Gentry. Now Venables needs some help, gets it out on the right side for Bell. Three ball from Mitchell, won't drop. Maddie McGowan with the miss. And here come the Leopardettes with a one-point deficit and a basketball. Yeah, and they're down, uh, you know, CCS is 0 for 4 so far from three-point range. And, I was watching them in pregame. They were knocking them down right and left. So uh, things are a little different when the lights come on. Russell stands with it between the circles. Four and a half left here. Valenciano, yes, two for two. 15-13, Leopardettes by two. Martin stands with it, works around the screen from Harper, reverses. And we're going to have a timeout call by Coach Chad Threlkill with 4.13 left to go here in the first half. 15-13, Leopardettes with a two-point lead. What do you bet he gets out of that zone? You think? <laughs> I bet he will. <laughs> we'll find out. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back after this on KBLP Live. Hey, Leopard fans. This is Nick Johnson from First Baptist Church, Lindsay. At First Baptist Church, we are a family ministry and desire to faithfully proclaim the gospel in Lindsay and beyond. We would like to invite you to join us every Sunday for worship at 9 a.m. and Sunday school following at 10.15. Our Wednesday evening activities start with dinner at 5.50, and then we have Bible studies for children, youth, and adults starting at 6.30. First Baptist Church is proud to support the Lindsay Leopards, and we wish all of our student athletes a successful season. From all of us at First Baptist Church, Lindsay, go Leopards! 4.13 left to go here in the first half, and the Leopardettes have a two-point lead over the number five-ranked CCS Lady Royals. 15-13 our score. Laney Venables will inbound for CCS on the far side. And goes down to Bell, covered by McGowan on the baseline. She's trying to find a way to get out of that. Gets it to Martin on the wing. She'll dribble to the top of the key, hand off to Venables, back over to the right side for Threlkill, who's back in the game. Inside, Bell is double teamed. Turnaround jumper is flat and too strong, but she'll get a foul called on the Leopardettes and go to the free throw line as McGowan will pick up her second. First team foul on the Leopardettes here in the second quarter, but Bell heads to the line. She's the only one who shot any free throws for the Lady Royals, and she was one for two her first trip, and she misses that one. Bell readies for her second free throw attempt, and that one won't drop either, but Martin comes up with an offensive board, and she's fouled going back up. Got to block out. Cannon Russell picks up her first, team's second in the quarter, and that'll put Martin at the line. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you know that. You can't have that happen. So Martin steps up. And that one's too strong and won't drop. Mm -hmm. Maybe we found their weakness. <laughs> hey, could be. Just foul them. <laughs> 
Martin readies for her second free throw, and that one rattles out, and another offensive rebound and put back by Ava Bell. Again, two missed blockouts and two missed rebounds, and it's a tie game. Yeah, you, you got to block out. You got to move them out of there. Ball intended underneath is turned over or knocked out of bounds, I should say, by the Lady Royals. 3.41 left in the half. We are all tied up at 15. Gentry on the baseline to inbounds. Russell gets it in the left corner. They wait for Gentry up top. Wanted to go back to McGowan, had it covered up. She'll dribble to the right wing. Still looks, comes back to Russell, right back to Gentry. Leslie, short corner right side, skip it all the way across to Valenciano on the wing, and she'll bring it back up. And we were both wrong. They stayed in that zone. Yes, they did. But Russell gets to the free throw line. Jumper is well short. Venables will come away with the rebound. Harper Hartsock brings it up with 3.10 left in the half. Martin left wing. Lost it, got it back. Sends it over to Thrill Kill to the right corner for Harper Hartsock. Gets around a screen from Venables. Goes right back to her in the corner, batted underneath. And they're going to call the reach around from behind on Maddie McGowan, and that's foul number three on Maddie. Yeah, I think that I don't think they got her on the reach. I think they got her holding her right, hold had her right arm around her waist, and oh. so he called it a hold. Well, she will check out, and uh, the five nine sophomore number forty five, Alondra Lopez, steps in for the Leopardettes. Martin gets it out on that right wing, goes back out to throw kill, and we're going to get an offensive foul called on Ava Bell for trying to block Lopez underneath from getting out to the corner, and that'll be her first, team second. I'm sorry, that is Ava Bell's second. Yeah, and we, we, we had a pretty thorough conversation about moving screens last game. <laughs> uh, and, and if that, you're setting a screen and you're moving, it's a moving screen, that's, and that's illegal. That's right, and that's exactly what she did, and then she looks at her coach like, what did I do? And there is another errant pass. And luckily, Martin dribbled it on the base on the out-of-bounds line. Again, Leslie just really just turned and threw it there. She didn't really look to see. And the Leopardettes with their eighth turnover, but they got it right back off to turnover number seven against CCS. Leslie checks out. Number 33, Brecken Klein, the 5'8 sophomore, checks in. Linciano up top to Gentry. Right side. Russell to incline inside to Lopez. Lopez, no, but got her own miss. That one won't go either, and Martin knocked it out of bounds. It'll be Leopardette basketball. Yeah, we got fortunate right there, but Lopez got two pretty good looks right yep. there. Uh, I like the action that we're getting it inside. So climb the inbounds. Got it out and passed mm -hmm. Venables. Tell you what, she's got some ups now. Yeah, she comes up. Reached really high to get that, get her hand on that and knock it out. So Klein will inbound again. This time now Gentry will trade places with her. Gentry will inbound on the baseline. 2.22 left in the half. We're still tied at 15. Lopez out in the corner. Back to Russell on that right wing. She'll work back up to the top of the key and reset. Linciano left side. Up top to Gentry. Back over right side, Russell to the short corner for Klein. Skip it back up top, Valenciano behind the three-point line. It's an air ball. Mm -hmm. Rushed that one because she saw the girl coming at her, and that one's short. Coach Cater wants a timeout. 2.03 left to go here in the first half. It's tie game at 15. We'll be back after this. This is Leopardette Basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. Hey there, this is Trace Adams with Hassler Hot Oil Service. We are family owned and operated with over 25 years experience. I am a fourth generation Lindsay Leopard and we proudly support Lindsay Leopards and Leopardettes athletically and academically in all their endeavors. Call my dad, Greg Adams at 405-756-6075 for all of your hot oil needs. Again, that's 405-756-6075. Go, Lindsay! Hi, I'm Jess Thornburg with Homestead & Co Realty. I'm a local realtor that lives locally. I live here and I work here. Growing up in rural Oklahoma, I was taught the value of doing the right thing. I know how valuable relationships are with good people. So I'd like to apply for the relationship of being your realtor. 
I'm not a high pressure salesperson from this city. So call me at 405-471-9855 when you're thinking real estate. You'll get information from a real person without the sales pressure. Call me at 405-471-9855. Let's go, Lindsay. So number four, Gracie Bray, the 5'2 freshman, has checked in for the Leopardettes for this final two minutes. As Hartsock brings it across the line, it's Harper to the high post. Venables tracks it down, goes baseline, turnaround jumper is short. Gentry Wilmot claims the rebound for the Leopardettes. Bray gets it left elbow, steps up too strong, and it'll go out of bounds. Great open shot there. And just left that one too short. A minute 40 left here in the half. As again, Harper Hartsock brings it up for the Lady Royals. Left wing to Martin. Martin with the three ball. It's too strong. And Russell got Harper Hartsock on her back going after that rebound. That is three on Harper Hartsock. And the Leopardettes will get the ball back in a tie game and a minute and a half to go. Russell. Walked it across the timeline. She'll stand and dribble as long as CCS will let her, I guess. Trying to get Bray to work up to the top. They'll give it to Valenciano. Valenciano around the screen, gets it right side Gentry. Gentry inside, left elbow jumper is short. Mitchell comes away with the miss. A minute to go. Mitchell hands it to Martin. Martin looks to drive down and Klein will get whistled for the foul from behind. Brecken's first, team's fourth, and Hope Martin hits back to the free throw line. Tie game at 15. We got 55.7 seconds left before halftime, and Martin has two points here in the first half and make it three as she finally gets a free throw to drop in. Klein is out. Leslie Wilmot back in for the Leopardettes. Martin readies for her second free throw, and that one won't drop. Gentry Wilmot tracks down the rebound. 50 seconds left. Linciano gets it to the high post to Leslie, and the pass knocked loose and be Leopardette. No, they're going to say Gray, Bray was the last to touch that. So Leopardettes now have 11 turnovers in the half. Bray is out, McGowan back in. Maddie's got to be careful here with three, with three fouls on her, though. 40 seconds left, a one-point Lady Royal lead at 16-15. Venables, the backdoor cut, got it to Martin, and Martin lays it in. We have a timeout. Cannon Russell ran so fast she ran out of her shoe. Yeah. 18-15, a three-point Lady Royal lead, 27 seconds left before halftime. Russell brings it up. Directs traffic, gets it to Leslie left wing. McGowan steps out top of the key over to Gentry. Gentry back to Cannon top of the key. Russell around the screen for McGowan. Picked up by Martin on the switch. Back inside McGowan, turns around, back out to Valenciano. Right wing three is short. Mitchell with the rebound with one second left, and that'll be it. Tell you what, the Leopardettes are in the ball game. 18-15, CCS a three-point lead here at halftime. We'll send it back up to JD. We'll take a timeout. Here's some words from our great sponsors of Leopardette basketball. Glenn and I will figure out our officially unofficial stats from the first half and be back with your first National Bank Halftime Show after this time out here on KBLP Live. Get your game day, or any day, off to a great start with Hot Mess Coffee at 213 South Main in Lindsay. Hot Mess Coffee Co. offers coffees, lattes, teas, and other tasty beverages, plus great food, too. Good luck to the Lindsay Leopards from Hot Mess Coffee Co. and Java House Realty at 213 South Main in Lindsay. With Oklahoma's weather being unpredictable, you need a trusted roofing company. At Legacy Roofing and Construction, we are proud to serve Lindsay, Oklahoma and the surrounding areas. Call Legacy Roofing and Construction for a free estimate at 405 756 
8855 or visit our website at legacy-roofing.com. Hey, Lindsay community. My name is Christian Torres, and I am the minister for the Lindsay Church of Christ. We would like to invite you to come and worship with us on Sundays at 1045 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We're located at 1205 West Cherokee Street. Here at the Lindsay Church of Christ, you will find the truth of God's word spoken in love and a group of people who love God and one another. Do you have a Bible question? Well, we have a Bible answer. Come and worship with us and be edified at the Lindsay Church of Christ. If you have a hankering for the best barbecue in South Central Oklahoma, then get yourself down to the Meat Locker Barbecue in Lindsay. Every Monday, Thursday, and Friday, located just off of Highway 19, 106 Northwest 4. At the Meat Locker, we work hard to bring you the most consistent, delicious, slow smoked barbecue around at a price that won't break the bank. And don't forget, we cater too, and we'd love to do the cooking for your next event. So come see us or give us a call, 405-428-1198. And visit our new website, MeatLockerBBQOK.com, for the latest Meat Locker merchandise. We're proud to sponsor this broadcast of Lindsay Leopard Athletics and want to wish all the students, faculty, and staff a successful year. Curb your hunger at a new location right here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. From the owners of El Unico Taco Truck comes Casa 13. Casa 13 will bring a delicious variety of Mexican food. Stay tuned to their Facebook for sneak peeks. Following their grand opening on January 4th, Casa 13 will be located at 110 Northeast 4th Street, right here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. Go Leopards! In our community, we believe in the power of unity and strength. Introducing the Pass Drug Free Coalition and a group of dedicated individuals committing to creating a drug-free environment. We work tirelessly to educate, empower, and support our community in the fight against drug abuse. Through prevention programs, awareness campaigns, and partnership, we've made a significant impact. Join us in our mission to create a drug-free community together. We can make a difference. Visit our social media accounts or email us today to find out how you can get involved. Let's go Leopards and Leopardettes. At Rural Electric Cooperative, we're committed to providing electric power and opportunity to the many areas our members call home. That includes supporting youth programs that teach life skills and build character. With REC, you're more than a customer, you're a member owner. And that's why we're always working hard to provide you with the most dependable electric power possible. As a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, REC is dedicated to providing the best service possible and supporting the communities in our service area. Back here at halftime, your first National Bank halftime show. It is 18-15 CCS by three as uh, we look at our officially unofficial stats from the first half. CCS is led by Ava Bell. She's got seven here in the first half, five from Hope Martin, and then two apiece from Laney Venables, Sadie Threlkel, and Annabelle Mitchell. The Lady Royals are two for eight from the charity strike. For the uh, Leopardettes, they are led by Maddie McGowan, who has eight, including two three-point baskets in that first quarter. And then Ariste Valenciano has six with two threes in the second quarter. Leslie Wilmot, one for two at the free throw line for her one point. In fact, that was the only free throws the Leopardettes shot there in the first half, so they are one for two as a team. The Leopardettes are plus one on the glass, 10 to nine. They have out-rebounded -re CCS. But 11 turnovers for the Leopardettes here in the first half, seven for the Lady Royals. With that, we go talk to Glenn and talk about shooting. Yeah, shooting numbers, uh, CCS uh, really lighting it up from two-point range. They are eight for 12 from two-point range, getting a lot of really good looks inside, moving to the basket, uh, shots out of the post. So they're doing a good job there. They're 0 for 5 from three-point range. Maybe we need to entice them to shoot some more threes. <laughs> Uh, but it comes out to a total of 8 for 17 for 
flip that uh, for the Leopardettes. They are terrible from two-point range. <laughs> One for nine oh. uh, from two-point range and four for ten from three-point range. So not bad, 40% from three-point range for a total of five for 19 for 26%. But, uh, you know, the Leopardettes are in the game. They've, they've got some things that have went their way. They need to take advantage of that. But, you know, the fact that uh, CCS is only two for eight from free throw line and 0 for five from three point line, uh, we've got to come out this second half and take advantage. But they're playing great defense. And, you know, uh, even though the uh, their shoot, uh, CCS is shooting 47%, there a lot of the shots that they're taking are tough shots. Uh, the, the ones that are hurting us are when we have our turnovers and they get run outs. Yep. So uh, we got to clean that up a little bit. But uh, you're right there in the game, three-point game. And, and so let's let's come out and uh, play just a little bit better. You don't, well, have to, you don't have to play a whole lot better, just play a little bit better. So what I told Coach Cater when we were talking before the game, I said from what little – from the, the highlights I watched – is if the Leopardettes will not turn the ball over and shoot well, shoot a high percentage, I like our chances. Mm -hmm. Well, we've turned the ball over 11 times. That's that's about, no, nine too many. Yeah. And we shot 26% from the field. Yeah. And we're still only down by three. If right. you imagine if we hadn't turned the ball over 11 times and if we'd have shot 40%. I mean, yeah. this will be a whole different ball game. So, again, I'm like you. The Leopardettes have got to come out here and, and keep that defensive intensity up here in the second half. Yeah. And, and take advantage of, of the situation they're in, you know. This is a great opportunity. You win this game, you're automatically in area. So, huge opportunity. Well, Presley Hartsock is back in as Lady Royals get the ball to start the third quarter. That was your first National Bank halftime show, by the way, here on KBLP Live. And Hartsock created some space but missed the shot short. Cannon Russell tracks down the long rebound. Yeah, Hartsock spent that whole second quarter on the bench, and she come out and kind of took an aggressive shot right there. Well, McGowan's on the floor. She's got three personals, so she's going to have to be smart. Lenciano, left wing for Russell as she dribbles to the top of the key, gives it to McGowan. Back up top, Leslie Wilmot, left wing for Lenciano. Venables has her covered up. They get it up to Gentry between the rings. Gentry works left, gets it to McGowan. McGowan spots up for three. Got it! Maddie's third three of the game puts her in double figures and ties the game at 18. Presley Hartsock again looks to drive in, dumps it down, got to get that cut off. And there's a rebound underneath. Mm. And Russell ends up out of bounds with it, so it'll go with the Lady Royals. Martin checks out. Kate Hollingsworth back in for CCS. Yeah, and that's what Presley Hartsock can do for her team is, is uh, really make things happen. Venables drives down on Leslie Wilmot. Great defense from Leslie right there. Forces a bad shot, and Cannon Russell with her fifth rebound. Russell pushes it over the left wing. McGowan, can she get four? Yes, yes. she can. 21-18, Leopardettes. 6.36 left to go here in the third. Presley Hartsock on the dribble. Blitz the double team, and they're going to say she double dribbled it. Eight turnovers now, and Venables is going to check out. Mitchell checks back in. Yeah, Presley's kind of pressing a little bit. Uh, you know, I think she got upset before the game when uh, one of the officials came out and told her to tuck her shirt tail in before the game even started. They were going through warm-ups. And <laughs> she, she kind of got all uh, flabbergasted at that. Three straight away from Valenciano won't drop. And Gentry ties up. I think that is uh, number 14, Edge of Bell, and the Leopardettes have the possession there. Yeah, let's see if we can do something off this set piece right there. Hey, all right, Case. <laughs> Gentry to inbound. Got yeah. it to Valenciano at the free throw line. Jumper mm. off the right side, no good. Ava Bell with her third rebound. Gets it up to Presley to bring across the timeline. Gets away from 
Russell momentarily. Gets it over on that right side to Mitchell. Underneath the bell. Turns around and gets a double team. Bad shot. Partially blocked. And McGowan comes away with her third rebound. 21-18 Leopardettes. 545 left here in the third. Linciano to McGowan. The top of the key. Turns around. Takes it to the baseline. Hollingsworth and the Leopardettes have passed tipped. Leslie to Gentry, the floater in the lane from Gentry is up and in. 23-18, Leopardettes by five. Their biggest lead of the game. Presley Hartsock on the dribble, gets it over to Thrill Kill, top of the key. Sends it back to Hartsock. Goes left, sends it down to Bell. Bell turns around on McGowan. Back out to Hartsock. Long two on the way. It's up and good for Hartsock. Her first basket of the game, and Coach Thrillkill wants a timeout. 5.03 left here in the third. It is 23-20. Leopardettes by three. We'll be back after this timeout. This is Leopardette Basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. SNH Tank Service is your choice for Lindsay owned and operated vacuum truck service. SNH Tank Service's fleet is equipped with transports, bobtails, pump and kill trucks rated up to 10,000 psi, plus hot oil units, rock trailers, frack tanks, mud and shell haul off pits, and soil farming. As Lindsay High School graduates, SNH is proud to support Lindsay schools and all of their student activities. SNH Tank Service would like to wish the Leopards and Leopardettes the best of luck in everything they do. Give SNH a call anytime, 24 7 at 405 756 3121. That's 405. 405- 756-3121. And remember, your phone starts our trucks. That's SNH Tank Service of Lindsay. 503 left here in the third. Liberdets with the ball and a three-point lead. They have outscored Lady Royals. Eight to two here in the first three minutes of this second, or second half. Valenciano right wing. Back up top between the circles to Leslie. Back over to Valenciano. Goes underneath to McGowan, turns around against the double team. No, but contact, and Maddie will go to the free throw line. Foul on CCS will be called on at number 12, Kate Collingsworth, her first. First team foul here in the third quarter. And McGowan cannot get the free throw to drop on her first. She's got 14 in the ball game with four threes. And make it 15 as she goes one for two at the line. Puts the Leopardette lead at four. And quickly, here comes Presley Hartsock. Stopped by Russell. She works right. Gets it to Mitchell on the right wing. Back up to Hartsock. Around the screen from Bell. Drives the baseline and shot blocked by Russell. But Presley goes to the free throw line to shoot two. Russell picks up her second personal. First team foul in the quarter. Yeah, you can tell Presley's really yep. trying to take over this game on, on the OCS offensive side. Yep. Well, she gets that free throw to go. She's got three in the ball game and cuts the Leopardette lead to three and make it four for her and a two-point Leopardette lead, 24-22. As we've got 420 left here in the third quarter. Russell brings it up. McGowan, top of the key, gets run over by... Presley Hartsock, yep. <laughs> and that'll be foul number three, three on Presley. Second team foul. Oh, oh! What did they do? They called it on on Hollingsworth. Not now. They're going to back. He's going to change his mind now. Everybody in here knows that Hartsock is the one that ran over it. Yes. Yeah. Now he'll change it back to number 10, which is the right call. Yeah. And again, her third. So Leverett's give it to McGowan, top of the key. Hands to Linciano. She'll work right to left. Over on the left wing to Russell. Russell backs out. Over to Valenciano. Back up top. Leslie, no. Too strong with the three. Rebound, throw kill. Here comes Presley. Down low, Bell, double team. Sends it back out. Hollingsworth in the corner to Mitchell. Run off the three-point line by Leslie. 
Trying to get it back. Hartsock finally does over on the left wing. Lobs it inside to Bell. Bell turns around on McGowan, left it short. McGowan with the rebound. Yeah, that, she's been, they've been trying to go down there and uh, just can't seem to get it to work. So Leopardettes for the ball and a two-point lead, 320 left here in the third. Gentry stands right wing, looks underneath at McGowan, comes to Leslie, top of the key. She'll try it again. That one won't drop either. Nearly had her own miss, but she's going to get whistled for the foul, trying to get in there and get her own rebound. Yep. Leslie's second will be the team's second. And Bell checks out. Laney Venables checks in. And here comes Presley Hartsock. Pushes it left. Now backs up. Calls the offense. Russell stays right with her. Venables comes to set the screen. She doesn't use it. Takes McGowan to the baseline. Yeah. And the scoop underneath is good for Presley Hartsock. She's got six in the quarter. The game is tied. Yeah, she's tough. Tough, tough, tough. Need to get her to pick up one more foul. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> left side, Gentry. Gets to the free throw line, sends it out to Russell, top of the key. Russell over to Valenciano, right wing. Back inside McGowan, toes up against Venables. Off the glass and in, McGowan. Leopardettes back up by two. Hartsock again drives down, out into the corner. Hollingsworth for three. That one's off the mark. Venables tries to get it, but she'll be out of bounds. And with 2.14 left in the third, the Leopardettes are going to have the ball in a two-point lead. Six points in this quarter for the uh, Lady Royals, and all six belong to Presley Hartsock. Yeah. She's that good. Linciano up top to Leslie. Gentry left wing. Out to Leslie in the left corner. The lob on the back side. McGowan can't get it. Got her own miss. That one is up and in. She's got 11 in the quarter, and the Leopardettes are back up by four, and there's Hartsock for three. It is a one-point game, 28-27. Leopardettes by one, a minute 35 left in the third. Yeah, Hartsock's just trying to will them back in yeah. this game. Gentry, left side, McGowan, three ball on the way. No, it's short. Rebound, Venables. Here comes Hartsock into the lane. Scoop shot up and in. She's got 11 in the quarter now, and Lady Royals are back up by one. Left wing, Linciano back to Gentry, top of the key. McGowan right wing. Skip it all the way to Russell on the left side. She'll back it back out, sends it out McGowan between the circles. Over to Gentry right wing. Gives it back to Russell, top of the key. Quickly left side, Valenciano. Back to Gentry, inside. Russell takes it up against Venables, and Venables will draw the foul. Her first, team's third. And that will put Cannon Russell at the free throw line for the first time tonight. 19 points in the ball game for Maddie McGowan. 11 here in the quarter, but 11 in the quarter also for Presley Hartsock, and again, she scored every point for CCS in this quarter mm -hmm. as Russell cannot get that one to drop. Maddie has scored all but two of the points for the Leopardettes in this quarter. Right. Yep. This may come down to which one of those picks up their fourth foul first. Yep. Russell misses both free throws. Yeah. Mitchell claims the rebound for the Lady Royals. 35 seconds left. Here comes Presley, picked up by Valenciano now. Between the circles for thrill kill. Right side, Hollingsworth. Back up to Hartsock between the circles. You got to get ready. You know she's going to be driving in. We're going to have to get ready to help here. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't switch yeah. defenses and maybe mix it up a little bit on them. Thrill kill hands it back. Hartsock gets to 10. Gives it to Hollingsworth left side. Back out to Hartsock. Picked up by Gentry. Hartsock. Gets around the screen from Venables. Gets it into the left corner. Three ball on the way off the mark at the buzzer. And CCS led by two at the end of one, led by three at halftime, and they'll lead by one here at the end of three. 
29-28, CCS by one at the end of three. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. After this timeout, this is Leopardette Basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. The Shopper News Note isn't just another paper. The Shopper News Note is a weekly publication that arrives in your mailbox every Wednesday for free. The Shopper offers free Shopper Topper advertisements as well as news notes and classifieds. And everyone at the Shopper wishes the Lindsay Leopards good luck this season. Go Leopards! Sooner Valve Repair in Lindsay would like to wish the Lindsay Leopards and Leopardettes all the best during this season. When need of a valve repair, come by Sooner Valve Repair at 106 Southwest 9th Street in Lindsay, Oklahoma, or call 405-756-1599. Good luck, Leopards, from Sooner Valve Repair in Lindsay. Josh Martin and everyone at TNW Tire here in Lindsay, Oklahoma, would like to wish the Leopards and Leopardettes the best of luck this school year. First one to 40 wins. We can start the fourth quarter with the Lady Royals with the basketball and a one-point lead over the Lindsay Leopardettes. Leopardettes starting five back on the floor. They have played pretty much this whole game. Bray in for a short time. Klein also in for a short time. But these starters have played it just about start to finish. Hartsock drives against McGowan, and McGowan just picked up number four. Mm -hmm. I said it may come down to which one picks up their fourth first, and she did. First foul here in the fourth quarter, but that is foul number four on Maddie. And they got to leave her on the floor. You don't have a choice here. Yeah, I think you got to roll the dice. I'm with you. Hartsock hits the first free throw as throw kill checks out. Hope Martin is back in. Second free throw won't drop. Rebound from Maddie McGowan. Here comes Russell. 30-28. Lady Royals by two. Cannon on the dribble. They will reset. The Royals are back in that man defense. Leslie left wing, and they're going to just let her go. And there's a turnover on the Leopardettes, number Excuse me, 12, and there's Martin with a run out at the other end. 32-28, a four-point lead for the Lady Royals. Leslie again stands left wing. Back up between the circles for McGowan. Over to Gentry. The backdoor cut. Leslie blew it. Oh. And then the rebound pulled down by Ava Bell, and then she threw it out of bounds. Mm. Leverdett's get a break right there. Brecken Klein is going to check back in the ball game. Leslie's going to get a breather. Yeah, a chance to refocus right yeah. there, I think. <laughs> <You> just, <laughs> she shook up. Uh, and she's harder on herself than anybody else can be, and she's kind of beating herself up right yeah, now. Missed a couple of shots right there. Klein for three left side. is short, rebound tipped. Saved in bounds by Vin or by Hope. Excuse me, by Hartsock. She has it with Valenciano on her. Works around the screen from Bell, and we'll get a check on Valenciano, trying to keep Presley Hartsock from driving the lane. Yeah, Presley Hartsock has taken over the second half. Absolutely. Outside of that runaway layup from Hope Martin, every point in the second half belongs to her. And again, they're going to just set the screen for her and let her go, and McGowan is unfortunately the one that they're picking to get the screen from. That one was a tough shot, and rebound pulled down by Russell. Russell pushes it up, Klein left wing, three ball from Klein on the way, it's good! Leopardettes back within one. 5.55 left in the ball game. Here goes Hartsock again. And we're going to get a blocking foul called on Russell, even though she did get the forearm from Hartsock. Russell did not get over there in front in time. Her third, team's third. Yeah, that's, that's, a, tr that's a problem right yep. now with that third foul. Although they didn't shoot free throws, but if Hartsock goes a little... 
Presley Hartzog goes to the free throw line. Oh, uh, Russell with the rejection on Martin. Can't believe they didn't call that a foul. And Russell drives down, and they're going to call an offensive foul. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Foul number four on Cannon Russell. So 540 left in the ball game, 32-31. Lady Royals with a one-point lead. Hollingsworth. Back over to Hartsock. Hartsock to the wing. Back up top, Hollingsworth. Three ball on the way. It's an air ball. That's 11 turnovers now on the Lady Royals. Leverett's with the ball and a one-point deficit. Yeah, they are one for nine from three-point range. So let them shoot threes. Yeah. <laughs> Left wing, Valenciano. Back up top to Gentry. Back to Valenciano. Back up to McGowan between the circles. Right side, Russell. Back to Valenciano up top. Gentry surveys. Comes back to Russell out near the half line. We're under five minutes left in the ball game. Leopardettes down by one with the basketball. Gentry gets it right wing. Let's give it all the way to Valenciano left side. Had trouble getting a hold of that one. Back to Russell. Back over to Gentry right wing. Brecken inside to McGowan. Back out to Gentry right corner. Yeah. Back out to Russell. Just run. be patient. Run your offense. If this gets all the way down, we'll take the last shot. Inside, McGowan steps up to a double team, missed it. Rebound pulled down by Russell. Goes under the basket. Sends it finally out to Klein. Out to Valenciano, three ball. No, it's an air ball. Ouch. It's just the second turnover on the Leopardettes in this quarter as uh, Thrill Kill will check back in and replace uh, Kate Hollingsworth for the Lady Royals. Valenciano is going to pick up Hartsock in the backcourt. As we approach four minutes left in the game, Lady Royals with a one-point lead. Thrill kill on the wing right side. Picked up by Gentry. Back up top to Hartsock. Turns around, the backdoor cut from Thrill Kill. Lost it out of bounds. Twelve turnovers now, and it'll be... Leopardette basketball. Russell will bring it up. Sends it right side to Valenciano. Into the right corner for Klein. Skip it all the way to the left side to Russell. Gentry left corner. Timeout called by Coach Cater. Looking a little ragged right there. We need yeah. to make sure we take care of this. It needs to be a good possession. 3.27 left in the ball game, 32-31. We're back with more live coverage of Leopardette basketball presented by the First National Bank after this timeout on KBLP Live. Are you a small business needing a little creative pick-me-up? Do you need to refresh your business cards or looking for a new logo? Is your business Facebook page still using photos from 2019? Tailored Creative Services offers the services for logo design, business cards, photography, videography, and pretty much everything in between. Find me on Facebook at Tailored Creative Services, and let's talk about your next project. We are live. 327 left to go in the ball game. 32-31. Lady Royals a one-point lead, but the Leopardettes with the basketball. Russell will get the inbounds, works to the top of the key. Hartsock with the defense there. Back to Valenciano, left wing. Klein comes back top of the key, looks for the shot, decides to go right side to Russell instead. They double-team McGowan, come back up top to Gentry. Klein left wing, back down to McGowan, and it was knocked away. Good defense from Annabelle Mitchell right there, knocks it loose.
So Leverett basketball, Gentry on the baseline in the corner, gets it in to Russell. She'll dribble all the way to the top of the key with it with three minutes left in the ball game. Lenciano left wing. Up to Klein, top of the key. Hartsock doing a great job of denying the ball to Russell. Gentry, Hartsock with the steal. And the band one at the other end. So count the basket for Presley Hartsock and the foul on. He, he called it on 13, I think. And it's actually 33. I agree it is on Klein. Yeah, they, they just, just changed, terrified yeah. that. Um, that is the fifth team foul on the Leopardettes. By the way, they have not called a foul on CCS in this quarter. As Hartsock completes the three-point play and makes it a four-point lead, 35-31 our score, three, or excuse me, 242 left to go here in the ballgame. Let's take a timeout with them. We'll come back with more live coverage of Leopardette basketball presented by the First National Bank after this timeout on KBLP Live. First National Bank of Lindsay is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Whether you're looking for a business loan, personal loan, or a certain type of deposit product, chances are we have what you're looking for. First National Bank, locally owned and operated, insured by FDIC, equal housing lender. For all your construction needs, give Brad Taylor a call with BNS Construction at 1-405-428-0039. BNS Construction specializes in concrete pads, sidewalks, and metal buildings of all sizes. Call Brad today for a free estimate. The crew at BNS Construction would like to wish the Leopards a safe and successful season. Go Lindsay! Thirty-five, thirty-one. It is a four-point lead for the Lady Royals. Leopardettes have been in this one from the word go. Had a uh, five-point lead of their own back in that third quarter. But it is now Leopardette basketball off of the 12th turnover in the ball. Excuse me, 15th turnover. In the yeah, ball CCS is going to a 1-3-1 one, one now, and they're going to start trapping, it looks like. Gentry over to Russell. Back to Gentry, yeah. and there's the steal. Martin to Venables, and Venables traveled with it. The Leopardettes get a break. Yeah. And I'll be honest, that is exactly what I watched them do against uh, Dixon in that 1-3-1 one, one trap. And when they would trap the far side, there was a girl in the passing lane on this side nearly every time. That's how they uh, came up with so many quick ones. Gentry, skip pass to Valenciano, three on the way, short. Rebound, lost out of bounds, last touch to our Klein. Uh. 2.13 left in the ballgame. That would have been huge if that was Oh, out. big time. Hartsock works on Valenciano up the floor as we approach two minutes left in the ballgame. Two-possession game with a four-point lead for the Lady Royals. Annabelle, or Ava Bell, but Venables has the rebound and the putback. 35-33. Thirty-seven, thirty-one. I've got to write that on the right side, Glenn. Excuse me. Leopardettes letting this one start to get away from it. They've got to have some baskets here. And there's Valenciano has her shot blocked by Mitchell. And then jump ball called as Bell had the loose ball and the possession arrows with the Leopardettes. So we still have a chance here with a minute and a half to go, down by six. Leslie Wilmot will check in the ball game for the Leopardettes. And she will replace Brecken Klein. Gentry will inbound on the baseline for the Leopardettes. Still looking, still looking. Lobs it in to Russell in the corner. She'll work it all the way back to the top of the key. Works left. Gets it to Gentry. Gentry stops. Three ball on the way. Got it! Gentry Wilmot for three. And it is a one possession game with a minute 19 to go. Timeout, Lindsay. 
And it's a full timeout. Let's take it with them. Three-point game. You don't want to miss the end of this. We're back after this timeout here on KBLP Live. For all your oil field electrical needs, call Michael Chirac with SOS Electrical. SOS is a family-owned business that specializes in oil field, industrial, and commercial electrical construction and maintenance. No job is too big. No job is too small. Give SOS a call at 1-405-428-1944 today. Good luck, Leopards. This is Dr. Matt Shelton with Lindsay Family Dentistry. I'm a 1997 graduate of Lindsay High School and have been practicing dentistry in Lindsay since 2006. We welcome you to come by our dental practice so we can help you and your family with all your dental needs. We offer dental services for everyone at every age, from braces to aligners to crowns, bridges, dentures, and implants. Give us a call today at 405-756-4093 or stop by at 102 Southwest 7th Street and let us give you the healthy, beautiful smile you've always dreamed of. We've got a minute 19 left. CCS has a one-point lead over the Lindsay Leopardettes. One possession lead, 37-34. I'll get it right. Martin will inbound. The Leopardettes come out full court pressure. They will trap Hartsock. She fell, but they're going to call a foul, and Hartsock's going to go shoot. And if they call that on Russell, that's her fifth. And it is. I want. Where's the review? I want. I want to challenge that call. So number 25, Marisol Hernandez, the 5'4 freshman, will check in for the Leopardettes and will replace Cannon Russell, who fouls out with just six rebounds, no points in the ball game. Although yep. she's been a massive catalyst in this game and has had to, had to guard Hartsock. Two free throws coming up here. Again, they have not called a foul on CCS this whole second half. Hart Sox first missed free throw of the game. And that one will drop in. That makes it a two possession game now at 38-34. We go to a minute 10. Gentry on the dribble with Russell out of the ball game. Works left side to Valenciano, picked up by Venables. Goes to the left elbow. Ru Leslie turns around, gets it out to Hernandez. Hernandez, baseline, throws it over to Gentry. Out to McGowan, three ball is blocked. A collision, and somehow Ava Bell comes up with a miss. And now with 45 seconds left, the Leopardettes are forced to foul. Valenciano picks up the foul, and I think they're considering an intentional right here on Valenciano. They are. So call the foul on Aris Day. It's just her second, but being an intentional, that'll be two free throws for Presley Hartsock. And the ball. And the ball. And that'll yeah. pretty much probably do it with just 44 seconds left. Yeah, if she makes both these free throws, it will. Knocks down the first one. And second one will not go. Five-point game, 44 seconds left. But, again, because of the intentional, they will get the ball. Martin will bring it in, but not until we have a timeout first. 44.8 left on the clock. It's a five-point Lady Royal lead when we come back after this on KBLP Live. Hey, Leopard fans, we at American Exchange Bank are excited for another year where we get to continue our support of Lindsay Leopard Athletics. Join us in cheering on our Leopards or catch all the action right here on KBLP Live. American Exchange Bank at 402 South Main has been the bank for the Leopards for nearly 100 years. Come see us if you're looking for a different banking experience. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. At American, we are Leopards supporting other Leopards. The team at Streamline Services contributes a great deal of their success to hard work 
experience, and above all, a positive health and safety protocol. There is every reason they should be your next phone call for any of your oil and gas swabbing needs. Give Austin Smith a call today at 1-405-756-7763 to see how Streamline Services can help with your project while ensuring safety and professionalism without sacrificing quality work being done. Everyone at Streamline Services wishes the best of luck to everyone at Lindsay Public Schools this year. Lady Royal basketball, they've got the lead and the ball and 35 seconds left in the ball game. Martin drives down. They're just trying to play keep away right now. Hartsock gets it back. They look to trap her and Leslie Wilmot will foul Hartsock and send her right back to the free throw line. So Lady Royals have scored 21 points here in the second half. And 17 of those 21 have come from Presley Hartsock. And she's back at the line to try to add to her total. And she'll get that one to fall in. This one would make it a three possession game. And with just 29 seconds left, that's gonna make it tough and she gets it to go. 41-34. Yeah, you need some yeah. quick threes. Yeah, got to have some quick baskets. Valenciano drives the lane, can't get it to drop. Martin with the miss, and that will pretty much do it with 15 seconds left. Hernandez is going to foul, which I don't think anybody really wanted to happen to give uh, Hartsock to pad her stats here. Mr. Free Throw. 7.9 seconds left in this one. I tell you what, the effort from the Leopardettes tonight was top notch against, uh, again, the number five ranked team in Class 3A. And to lose this one by eight is uh, a valiant effort. 42-34, our final score. We'll uh, send it up to J.D., take a timeout. We will be back to wrap this one up. You're ready for a boys matchup after this timeout here on KBLP Live. Are you tired of doing laundry? Give Sunshine Suds a call and let them do it for you. Sunshine Suds will wash and fold your clothes, and they also offer dry cleaning. Sunshine Suds also does quilting and alterations. Load up that laundry basket and head to Sunshine Suds, located at 107 Southwest 2nd Street in Lindsay, Oklahoma, or give them a call at 405-756-2850. BC Factoring and Finance is a local, family-owned finance company. We assist small businesses with flexible and creative financing solutions to meet their cash flow needs. Call us to discuss ways we can help free up your time to focus on building your business. Visit us online at bcfactoring.com or give us a call at 405-259-2104. Go, Lindsay! El Unico Taco Truck is ready to curb your hunger. The Traveling Taco Truck has locations in Lindsay and Blanchard and is available for catering services. You can contact El Unico to book your next event at 405-760-0821. El Unico enjoys supporting all of our leopards with their Taco Tuesdays. Reach out to El Unico for your next event. Hughes Heat and Air is a family-owned business that serves Lindsay and surrounding areas. Hughes Heat and Air provides service for residential and commercial jobs, including simple repairs and new installations. Hugh and his crew take pride in providing professional, efficient, and reliable work at affordable rates. For your next heat and air project, give Hugh a call at 1-405-756-6399. Good luck, Lindsay. Capturing all your special moments is such a blessing to me, from running down the ball field to walking down the aisle. Call or text Photography Blessings by Lacey for all your photography needs. 405-428-0305. Go Leopards and Leopardettes. 
Shaver's Drug has been locally owned and operated for almost 60 years and has employed many leopards and leopardettes. We are very proud to be a supporter of our sports teams. At Tabor's Drug, your prescriptions are filled with care and accuracy, and our pharmacist is available for free consulting concerning your prescriptions bought at Tabor's. We also offer interpreters for our Spanish-speaking friends. We are a very friendly store that has that small town feel. You can reach us at 405-756-4511. Come and see us. Car Care Center is your hometown auto repair shop right here in Lindsay, America at 211 West Cherokee, providing complete automotive repair on foreign and domestic cars and trucks. So if your ride needs repair or service, Car Care Center can get it done. Whether it's radiators, mufflers, brakes, or diagnostics, Car Care Center can handle whatever you need to get back on the road. Call Car Care Center at 405-756-1447. That's 756-1447. Available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's Car Care Center at 211 West Cherokee in Lindsay. Clements Insurance provides insurance coverage to best suit your needs. We offer auto, home, farm, life, and business policies. Come by 109 West Chickasaw or call 405-756-2253. Clements Insurance is carrying on the tradition to satisfy you. So come see me, Keith, or Beth. Go Lindsay. Back to wrap up a very, very good girls game. 42-34, the Lady Royals of Community Christian come away with the eight-point win over the Lindsay Leopardettes. And scoring for the Lady Royals, uh, it was the uh, Presley Hartsock show. Finished with 20 points all in the second half. And then seven from Ava Bell. Those were all in the first half. Hope Martin finishes with seven. Five of her seven were in the first half. Four points from Laney Venables and two apiece from Sadie Threlkel and Annabelle Mitchell rounds out the scoring for the Lady Royals, who were 11 of 21 is what I had them for That's here at a ball game from the free throw line. Leverdat's got 19 from Maddie McGowan, had an 11-point third quarter, had four threes in the ball game as well, and uh, finishes with 19.6 rebounds in the ball game. Uh, managed to not foul out and after picking up that fourth foul. Played well and uh, did not uh, manage to stay in the whole game. Uh, six points from uh, Aris Dave Valenciano. She had two huge threes there in that second quarter for her six points. Five from Gentry Wilmot. She had a big three there in that fourth quarter. Uh, three points also from Brecken Klein, who had that big three in the fourth quarter as well to help the Leopardettes stay in it. A free throw from Leslie Wilmot to round out the scoring. Cannon Russell finished the game with nothing in the scoring column. She did have six rebounds in the game, but she fouled out with a minute 16 to go in the ballgame, trying to stay up with Presley Hartsock there in the second half. So with that, let's go over in Glenn and talk about some shooting numbers. Oh, I guess I should round out mine first. 18-19, Leopardettes out-rebounded by one in the ballgame, and then the Leopardettes 17 turnovers and 13 turnovers for the Lady Royals. Now we'll talk to Glenn. Yeah, CCS uh, – 14 for 26 from two-point range. Really shot the ball well from there, 54%. Uh, one for nine from three-point range. They really struggled from distance for 11% for a total of 15 for 35 for 43% from the field. Uh, for Lindsay, four for 18 from two-point range, uh, 22%. They only made four twos. Uh, eight for 22 from three-point range, uh, making those eight threes really kept them in the ball game. Uh, but that was just 36 percent, and then uh, so that's a total of 12 for 40 or 30 percent from the floor uh, for the Lindsay Leopardette. So uh, got out shot 43 percent to 30 percent, but uh, uh, you know uh, got out scored from the free throw line by nine. If they could have kept them off the line, you know, yep. I, that that would have been huge. And, uh, uh, we, you know, no telling what would have happened. But uh, they take 21 free throws. We take six. Yep. Makes a difference. Yep. And, again, the Leopardettes uh, dropped this one 42-34, the score. And that means the Leopardettes will move into a consolation game. That game will be tomorrow night at 6 o'clock and they will take on Atoka. And 
We'll see how uh, that game comes out tomorrow night as the Leopards, Leopardettes, excuse me, will look to make it through the consolation side of the bracket. Atoka defeated Frederick earlier today, 61-25. So, uh, Atoka and Lindsay, 6 p.m. here at Leopard Arena tomorrow night. The uh, Community Christian Lady Royals will await the winner of the Kingston Marietta game. We'll see if we can figure out who that is. That game was going on at Kingston the same time this one was. So. Uh, those two winners will play Saturday night at 6 o'clock, and the winner goes uh, one win away from the state tournament as they go to area. The loser of that game will have uh, uh, an extra game to play when they get to area. With that, uh, we are going to step aside. We'll send it up to J.D. We will get set up for the boys' matchup right after this time out here on KBLP Live. Whether you want to promote your business or unite your team, depend on Design It. Locally owned and operated, we are dedicated to offering the service you need to give you the results you deserve. We are committed to providing you with custom screen printing, embroidery, custom graphic designs, logo designs, and we have a creative arts department and an in-house artist who can take your idea and give it our professional touch with custom art services. Contact us today. This is Brandon Cottrell, pastor at Calvary Baptist Church. Just want to take a moment and invite you to come worship with us this Sunday. Classes begin at 930 and worship follows at 1045. We have something for all ages each Wednesday night. Meals begin at 530 and Bible study follows at 630. We would love to have you come be a part of our worship. We are located 410 West Chickasaw. Come join us. For over 68 years, Winans Funeral Home in Maysville, Oklahoma, has been serving families in the area during their greatest time of need, the loss of a loved one. We treat each family as if they were our own and consider it a true calling to minister to each and every family that calls upon us. We don't take caring for your loved one and your family lightly. Your care is important to us. Call on us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where our staff can assist your family with immediate need with the loss of a loved one, pre-need arrangement planning, pre-need burial insurance, along with questions regarding funeral burial trust accounts, Veterans Administration, and Social Security benefits questions. Myself, John W. Williams, Teresa, and Claudia are well experienced in these areas and will be more than happy to assist you in any way we can. Winans Funeral Home in Maysville, where you are family. Number 23 is Junior, and I've tried to practice this name. Senglimva. Senglimva. I still can't say it. I'm just going to call him Junior. 6'5", senior, by the way. Number 24 is Carson Jones. He's a 6'3", senior. And, of course, the star of this show is number 25, Luke Gray. He is a 6'8", senior. And he has uh, all kinds of offers for basketball and football. He's a tight end on the Saints football team. But he is listed as a 6'8 senior. The head coach for OCS is Brandon Weaver. He is assisted by Trevor Davis, Alfred Jackson, and Scott Streller. Now for the Lindsey Leopards, who come in 12 and 12 on the season. At guard will be number three, a 5'10 sophomore, Creed Taylor. 
At forward, a six-foot senior, number four, Brody Ramming. At guard will be a six-foot-tall senior, number 11, Bryson Watts. At forward, a 6'2 sophomore, number 23, Bryce Cater. And to round out the starting five for the Leopards, a 5'9 sophomore, number 24, Mandel Aguero. Aguero, Cater, Watts, Ramming, and Taylor, the starting five for the Lindsay Leopards, who are head coach is Devin Terry in his first season here at Lindsay. He is assisted by Gavin Wilson. And the Leopards again, 12-12. 12 12. Here we go, Greg. Coming to this one. Here we go, Greg. Here we go. Here we go. This this is going to be uh, very interesting. Again, we talked about uh, the coaching. Uh, yeah. This is a team. We don't have anybody that's going to match up with a six eight guy inside, and you got a six five guy with him. Yeah, the six you know. two guy. Yeah, Their back so, line is six yeah. two, six, six five, five six, six eight. eight. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and our yeah. our tallest player is uh, Brian Cater, six two. Six two. Yep. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know if they're uh, the oh, official. You can't have uh, logos on your socks. Ah. So he had so, to turn them uh, over. Got to roll his socks down and roll his leggings up because he can't have any logos showing. So I guess uh, Luke Gray may have to start this game out oh. in the locker room changing clothes, and they're going to bring in number four, James Huffmeyer, the 6'3 sophomore. Well, I wonder so, why they couldn't just yeah. run some tape over them. Yeah, they might could have, but. Well, yeah. it, you know, they've got another guy over there with jump man on his socks, and Brody yeah. Ramming has Under Armour on, on his, his socks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Bri hey, uh, Bryce Cater has uh, Nike yeah. on his Nike, socks. Nike, I don't know. That's, that's so interesting. Does, so does yeah. uh, Bryce Bryson Watts. So uh, I don't know what the deal was with the socks. Yeah. Uh, and it may it, it may have been the the – the un, the leggings that he was wearing may have been the offending, uh, not the socks. But yeah. Ramming will uh, step up against Junior and controlled in the backcourt by Ramming. The Leopards will get the first chance here. Watts will bring it across, and they do. They go to exactly what we thought they might do is go to X here and basically run a stall game. Yeah, and run a stall game with their best player out. Ramming steps out to get it. Goes to work on the 6'5 junior. Now he's double teamed. Got to get it away. Taylor underneath. Pass intended for Aguero, but batted out of bounds. Nice idea, but yep. Yep. Took the shorts off. So now Gray is back in the ballgame. Watts will inbound. Taylor gets it left wing up top to Aguero. Watts will come back to get it, and they'll reset that X motion. Cater gets it right wing. Drives the lane, sends it to Taylor in the corner. Taylor for three, no. Aguero with the offensive board, can't get the put back to go. And Taylor nearly saves it, but he's going to say it's last touched by Taylor. Man, what a play underneath there by Aguero amongst the trees. Yeah, and uh, just to get that shot up. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't fall. Leopards back up into a 2-3 zone. Ramsdale will work it to the left, works around the screen from Gray, goes over to the right wing. And then Gray lost it but got it back. He'll send it back out to Brown. Up top, long three ball is short. Watts with the miss as Carson Jones could not get it to drop. So the Leopards again will go into this. X motion, Watts around the screen, comes out to Ramming. And Gray may just let him stand out there. Now he'll come force the issue. Ramming works left. Watts comes out to get it. Watts goes left, sends it out in the corner to Aguero. Aguero back out to Ramming. Faces up on Gray. Count going. Goes down, sends it back out to Aguero. Jones out on him. All the way over right side to Cater. Cater goes back door, takes it up high, off the glass and in. And Leopards take a 2-0 lead two minutes into the quarter. 
Left side, Brown. Skip it all the way back over to Jones' right wing. Three ball is on the way, off the back iron. And there's a loose ball taken by Cater. He'll push it up. Stops, fires the three. It's off the front of the iron, no good. Jones with the rebound. Quickly the other way, here comes Ramsdale. And he'll circle it back out, set it up. Leopards go back into that zone. Junior got open underneath as he pinned the Leopards up high, and he'll get contact and head to the free throw line. The foul called on Brody Ramming his first, team's first. Two free throws coming up for a Junior, and I will not attempt to butcher his last name again. Singa Yumba. Singa Yumba. Okay. Singa Yumba. What Glenn said. Singa Yumba. It rolls off the tongue. Sure it does. Singa Yumba. Well, Singa Yumba misses the first free throw. The Leopards hang on to that 2-0 lead. We've got 5.28 left to go here in the first quarter. Second free throw. The Singa Yumba knocks that one down, makes it 2-1. Leopards with a one-point lead. Full court pressure, and Gray bats the pass and steals it away. Ramsdale left side to Jones underneath the gray double teamed and fouled and if they get that on ramming that'll be his second quick foul and they did that is not going to bode well if they're going to call that second team foul Ramsdale to inbounds out into the corner to Jones inside for gray gray can't handle the pass turnover OCS Leopards get it back and here comes again the full court pressure Taylor back to Watts, over to Cater. Cater is trapped, back to Watts, and timeout called by Coach Terry to make sure we didn't turn that one over right there. 5.06 left to go here in the first quarter. Timeout, Lindsay, we'll come back after this. So let's do this, you're right. Let me do my own commercials here. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the American Legion Auxiliary fundraisers. Uh, first of all, there is a bake sale going on tomorrow that will be at the American Exchange Bank down here on Main Street. It starts at 9 a.m. And, of course, all the money raised is, uh, by the auxiliary there assists veterans and their families. So make sure you go by American Exchange Bank starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. And yep. uh, they'll have uh, all kinds of goodies down there for you. Then the Egg My Yard fundraiser. If you want to get some Easter eggs hidden in your yard for the kiddos to go find on Easter Sunday, we'll uh, get a hold of Radina Chambers. 754-0137 or radinachambers at gmail.com, and she'll give you all the details on that. You can have them egg your yard. They'll come in and hide the eggs for you for the kiddos to look for on Easter. And there is nearly a steal, and I think they're going to get Ramsdale coming under Cater there. That foul on Ramsdale, his first, and the team's first here in the quarter. So Cater again will inbound for the Leopards. Watts in the backcourt. Gets away from Brown momentarily. Goes left. Watts drives down and carried the basketball. Two turnovers on the Leopards, and they'll give the ball right back to the Saints with a one-point lead and 450 left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're three minutes in, and they've only scored one point where the defense is working. Jones stands with it. Into the corner, Ramsdale. Skip it back up top for Brown. Back over to Ramsdale. Jones. And then Watt steals the pass. Takes it to the right wing. Back out to Cater. Steps up to the three-point line. Sends it to Ramming at the free throw line. Ramming over to Aguero. Baseline. And he saw that big 6'5". Guy running at him, and the shot from the corner doesn't go. It's loose on the floor, and still loose. And they're going to say Ramming touched it while it was on the out-of-bounds line. It'll be a turnover on the Leopards. And checking in for Lindsey will be number two, Isaac Cameron, the six-foot-tall freshman. Ramming will check out with those two fouls. Jones also checks out for OCS. Number 11, Connor Owens, a six-foot-tall senior, checks in. Ramsdale on the handle. 
Aguero tips the pass, turnover. Here goes Watts to Aguero, and then they turn it right back. Couldn't handle the pass. Quickly the other way, Brown. Gray can't handle it. Aguero with a steal. He'll pull it back out to Cater, over to Taylor. 3.40 left in the first quarter, and it's still just 2-1. to one. Gray works on Cater. Cater can't get a hold of the basketball, and then passes tipped, and the Leopards with their fifth turnover. Ramsdale against Taylor, no, and they're going to call a foul on Taylor. Creed's first is the team's third. That'll put Ramsdale at the free throw line to shoot two. Leopard still with a 2-1 lead. And again, we've played, what, five and a half, four and a half minutes here, and yep. it's still just two to one. Now make it two to two as Ramsdale hits that one. Ties the game at two, and Gray is going to check out number 22, Ryland J. The 6'2 junior checks in for OCS. Ramsdale second free throw, up and good. 3-2 OCS with their first lead and a steal. Ramsdale gets it underneath and Huffmeyer lays it in. So quick, golly. 5-2. Cameron across the timeline, gives it back to Taylor. They trap, got it back to Cameron. Cameron drives into the lane, spin move, up with the left hand and in. 5-4, Leopard's back within one. And a timeout called by Coach Weaver. Exactly three minutes to go in the first. OCS will have the ball in a one-point lead when we come back after this timeout. This is live coverage of Leopard basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. For all your tax services, contact Grant and Katie Johnson, CPA. Grant and Katie are certified public accountants that provide full-service accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, and tax services. With two offices, one located at 600 Southeast 4th Street in Lindsay, Oklahoma, and another at 313 North Walnut in Pauls Valley, Grant and Katie are ready to meet your CPA needs. Give Grant or Katie a call at 405-238-2727 and set up your appointment today. Wow, they took big boy Exactly out. three minutes left to go in the first quarter. It's 5-4, Saints by one. Yeah, the Saints have went to their small lineup. They took their 6-5 and 6-8 guys out. Ramsdale has it left wing up top. Brown sends it over on the right wing to Owens. Carter Owens checked in for the first time. Back up top to Brown. Back over to Ramsdale left wing. Back to Brown. No look pass down to the baseline. Jones can't get it to go. And Aguero, or excuse me, Cater comes down with it. And a jump ball. Jump ball, possession arrow with OCS. Carson Jones is going to check back in. Kyler Brown checks out for OCS. Coach Terry making his case that that should have been a foul. Gray is back in the ball game as well, and he forces his way into the rack. Missed his shot. They're going to, they're going to count the bucket for Gray. They're going to call a technical on Coach Terry. 7-4, OCS by three, and Coach Terry. And I guess they're going to call a foul on the shot as well or not. So I'm trying to figure out, was there a foul called on the shot? Or no, did they just, no, it's just, just a, a technical. technical. Okay. Yeah. So Gray's going to shoot the technical free throws. And he missed the first one. Of course, the Coach Terry now has to sit. Mm -hmm. Can't be up walking around. And he'll get the second one to crawl over the front of the rim and fall through to make it 8-4 CCS. Yeah, you don't want to yell at Nick Miller. Uh, I've been there, done that. He's teed me up before, too. So. And, of course, with the technical, 
Saints will have the ball as well as Ramsdell will bring it up. Left wing to Owens. They lob on the backside. Jones missed it, tipped it back up. That one won't go either. Aguero over to Watts. Cameron across the timeline. Ball's loose. Knocked out. Last touch by the Leopards. They've already got seven turnovers in the ball game, and we still got two minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah. Saints basketball, Ramsdell. Left side to Jones. Skip it all the way back to the right side to Owens. To the free throw line, lob it down to the 6'8 gray. Missed the left-hander, got his own miss. Put that one up, that one won't go either. He's having, but, he's having problems getting the ball to fall. But the foul called on the Leopards goes on. Isaac, Isaac Cameron. 15 foul. <laughs> They've called one foul on uh, OCS so far. As Gray drops that one in. Nine to four. OCS with the five point lead. Gray still with the second free throw to come. He's got two points at the free throw line. In fact, the only they've hit one field goal this whole quarter. Two. They've hit two. Uh, that's right. Yep. Gray, had, Gray had that field goal as well. But they've, yep. that, they're up by six, and all six points are from the free throw line. Yep. They've shot eight free throws, and we haven't shot any yet. They did just call a foul, though. Uh, they called it on uh, Carson Jones. Taylor gets across the timeline. Oh, the backside, trying to get it to Cater, threw it away. Right idea. What's that saying? Right, you had right idea, poor execution? Yeah. I had the right idea because Cater was wide open back there with everybody on that side of the floor, but got to get the ball to him. Ramsdale sends it left side to Jones, back to Ramsdale. Over to the Jones right side, under the gray. Double team, puts it up and in. Woo. That looked like a D1 guy right yep. there. Cameron gets the ball, gets it to Watts. Back over to Cater. Cater lost it. Uh-oh. And Gray with a two-hand flush. Puts OCS up by 10. And another turnover if Isaac Cameron can't come up with it. Jump ball and Leopards with the possession arrow. Number two is Eli Winter, the 5'9 sophomore that checks in for OCS. Taylor pushes it up the floor, trapped, tried to get it to Aguero. Ten turnovers on the Leopards. We've got 51 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's 14-4, 7-0 run by OCS here. Leopards were down by three at 7-4, and it's gone downhill from there. NBA three, rims out no good but for Jones, but rebound, and then Cameron with the block shot twice. Huffmeyer had a rebound, and there's a baseball pass to Aguero at the other end of the floor. He did a great job of bouncing it off the leg of Jones to save that possession. In for the Leopards will be number one, Armando Hernandez, the 5'9 sophomore. Taylor will get a breather here with 22 seconds left in the first quarter, and Gray is also going to check out as Junior checks back in. And whistles. And a foul on OCS goes on number four, Huffmeyer. Yeah, he was holding eyes. The guys are trying to get around the screen, and he had a hold of him. Armando gets it into Aguero up top. Down to 15 seconds. Aguero back to Cameron. Gets around his man, gets it out into the corner. Watts for three, no. Junior with the rebound. Five seconds left. They come quickly the other way. Skip it back up one. Huffmeyer as Watts comes away with that steal. 
but it'll be 14-4, OCS a 10-point lead at the end of one. We'll send it to JD, take a timeout. We're back with more live coverage of Leopard Basketball presented by the First National Bank after this timeout on KBLP Live. Hey, Leopard fans, this is Nick Johnson from First Baptist Church, Lindsay. At First Baptist Church, we are a family ministry and desire to faithfully proclaim the gospel in Lindsay and beyond. We would like to invite you to join us every Sunday for worship at 9 a.m. and Sunday school following at 1015. Our Wednesday evening activities start with dinner at 550, and then we have Bible studies for children, youth, and adults starting at 630. First Baptist Church is proud to support the Lindsay Leopards, and we wish all of our student athletes a successful season. From all of us at First Baptist Church, Lindsay, Go Leopards! Hey there, this is Trace Adams with Hassler Hot Oil Service. We are family owned and operated with over 25 years experience. I am a fourth generation Lindsay Leopard and we proudly support Lindsay Leopards and Leopardettes athletically and academically in all their endeavors. Call my dad, Greg Adams at 405-756-6075 for all of your hot oiler needs. Again, that's 405-756-6075. Go, Lindsay. Getting ready to start the second quarter. OCS will have the ball in a 10-point lead. And, of course, we're finding out why OCS is ranked number one in the state. They are good. Ramsdale will give it up to Brown as they play the weave up top. Go to the high post to Junior. Out to the left wing. Back up top to Ramsdale. And they're going to say Ramsdale shifted his feet and traveled. Six turnovers now on OCS. They will stay in the full court pressure. The Leopards have turned it over 10 times already in this ball game. Cater gets it into Watts quickly. They got it to Ramming. Back over to Cater right wing. They break the press this time. Ramming at the right elbow. Turns around on Junior. Up and got it. Strong move from Ramming. Leopards back within eight. Top Ramsdale, right wing goes to Brown. Skip it all the way back to the left side to Jones. Back over to Brown in the right corner. Penetrates into the lane, sends it back up top to Ramsdale. Between the circles, Brown. And left wing three will not drop for Jones. Hernandez has the miss. They'll trap Watts in the backcourt. Gives it back over from Hernandez to Watts. And Watts passes, tended for Aguero, but tipped. The trap, Watts got it out to Ramming. Ramming works on Gray. Hernandez will come get it. Junior on him. Hernandez over to the right side to Cater. Cater goes baseline. Double team, Euro step. Floater is short. Tried to get his own miss. Hernandez took it away from him and lost it out of bounds. Yeah, fighting over it. Yeah. The same, same team, same team, same team. Nice move from Cater, though. It just didn't get it to drop. Yeah. So here comes OCS with an eight-point lead in the basketball. Jones looking for Gray underneath. Can't get there. Got it to the free throw line to Huffmeyer. Working back around Jones, or excuse me, Gray out in the short corner now. Jones back to Ramsdale penetrates. The floater in the lane is well short. The offensive board pulled down, though, by Huffmeyer. And He'll be fouled on his putback attempt and head to the free throw line, and that one goes on Hernandez, his first, first on the Leopards here in the second quarter. 6-14 left before halftime. It's still 14-6, OCS by eight, and make it nine as Huffmeyer knocks that one down. Huffmeyer's second one. On the way, that one will skip out no good. Rebound loose, and Watts will claim it on the back side. Down to Ramming. Ramming across the lane intended for Aguero, and Gray with his big leg sticks in there and knocks it out of bounds. So Watts will inbound on the baseline for the Leopards. Look, finally gets it to Hernandez up top to Aguero. Ramsdale pushes him all the way to the right side. Jones went for the steal, missed it. Hernandez for three, no. 
Rebound pulled down by Huffmeyer. Excuse me, that's Brown. And in transition, the dunk is missed. The ball saved. Wow. Gray inside, triple team, creates space. And they're going to call an offensive foul. That's what Coach Terry lobbied for the first time and didn't get it and ended up getting a technical call on him. But Gray used that shoulder to create that space, picks up his first and the team's first. Aguero will check out along with Watts. Taylor returns along with Cameron. And the reach-in foul from behind will be called on Huffman. That'll be Huffmeyer, excuse me, his second, team second. And they do reach a lot to try to knock that ball loose. And I think if you just try to get past them, that can get those fouls. Yeah, you know, we're, we've, got to, we've got to break the press, and then we've got to be a lot more patient and disciplined on the – Taylor all the way to the rack. Missed it short, though. Rebound pulled down by Gray. Ramsdale out to Jones, another NBA three. That one's good. His first basket of the game makes it 18-6, 12-point lead. Taylor across the timeline to Ramming. Ramming pulls back, realized he had a, like a three on two there. But and there's, again, going for the steal. Taylor got away from him. Ramming stands with the left wing. Hernandez goes baseline, sends it back out to Ramming. Ramming drives in, spin move, lost it, got it back, sends it over to Taylor, wide open three right corner, it's short. Rebound is loose, and Hernandez has it rejected and then knocks down. Again, no whistles. Taylor over to Cater. Cater step back three on the way. That's good! 18-9, Leopards back down to single digits within nine. 425 left in the half. Jones up top to Ramsdale, back to Jones. And another, and he's standing near the sideline. Let that one fly too strong. Taylor the rebound. He's got, got Junior on his hip, draw the way down. Hernandez sends it to Ramming. Cater drives in. Sends it back out to Carson. Excuse me, Cameron between the rings. And they're going to say Isaac traveled with it. 405 left. Before halftime, it's still a nine-point OCS lead. Brown checks out. Connor, Connor Owens checks back in. Yeah, the zone's doing a pretty good job of containing Gray, but uh, they haven't been able to hit any threes, so good call to go into a zone by Coach Terry. Jones left wing all the way back over to the right side. Three from Owens is on the way. It's an air ball. On the back side for the rebound is Hernandez. Yeah, they're one for seven from three-point range. Cameron has it in the backcourt. He'll give it up. No, he won't. He'll keep it now. Give it to Hernandez, who's got Jones hanging all over him. And Hernandez rolled or messed the knee up. He's hurt. Uh -huh. Oh, and Jones tried to dunk it and missed it. And Hernandez is hurt. Armando's going to check out. I hate to see that. He uh, he went down with that knee. Yeah, it kind of buckled sideways under him. That's not a good sign. But, again, Jones trying to be fancy. Misses the layup at the other end. The Leopards still within nine. 325 left before halftime. Watts works to the right wing. Gets around the Cameron screen. He's got Gray on him now. Gets it over to Ramming. Ramming sets the screen for Taylor. They double-team him. He'll bring it back. The back cut from Cameron into the lane. Has his shot rejected, but they're going to call the foul. Two shots coming for Isaac Cameron as uh, Carson Jones picks up his second. Third team foul, and Isaac Cameron heads to the line. <laughs> He'll have two free throws coming up here with 3.08 left in the first half. Yeah, this is they've shot 10 free throws. This is our first of the game. Yep, and missed that one. Jones checks out. James Huffmeyer is back in. And Junior Singing Yumba checks out as well. And Cameron can't get that one to go either. Cater nearly had a rebound there, but Gray comes away with it. 
Quickly the other way, Owens. Back up top to Ramsdale, over to the left side for Brown. Back to Ramsdale between the circles. Back over right side for Owens. Inside Gray, baby hook, won't drop. Cater with the miss. And there's the timeout called by Coach Terry with 2.48 left to go here in the first half. It's 18-9 OCS on top. We'll take a timeout, come back to Leopard Arena after this. This is live coverage of Leopard basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. Hey there, this is Trace Adams with Hassler Hot Oil Service. We are family owned and operated with over 25 years experience. I am a fourth generation Lindsay Leopard and we proudly support Lindsay Leopards and Leopardettes athletically and academically in all their endeavors. Call my dad, Greg Adams at 405-756-6075 for all of your hot oil needs. Again, that's 405-756-6075. Go, Lindsay! With Oklahoma's weather being unpredictable, you need a trusted roofing company. At Legacy Roofing and Construction, we are proud to serve Lindsay, Oklahoma, and the surrounding areas. Call Legacy Roofing and Construction for a free estimate at 405-756-8855 or visit our website at legacy-roofing.com. Two forty-eight left to go in the first half. It's 18-9. Leopards trail by nine. It will be Leopard basketball coming out of the timeout. And some full court man pressure here from the Saints. Cameron will come get it. He'll be picked up back there by Huffmeyer. Of course, he will work across the timeline with it. Huffmeyer chases him all the way around. Now picks up his dribble, goes to Ramming. Ramming to the corner. Taylor got his man in the air, drives in the lane, and traveled with it. How is that a travel? I don't know. Uh, I think he just took it a couple of steps, and instead of shooting, decided to pass. I didn't think that's, it really was that, a travel. That's okay. Yeah. What but in the world? 225 is left, and OCS has the ball back up by nine. No look pass to the high post. Sends it out to the right side. Owens comes back up top to Ramsdale, out into the corner to Huffmeyer. To the high post, Rammy, or excuse me, Watts comes away with the steal. And then knocked down. Leopards will get the foul called on Owens. And Connor Owens first is now the fourth team foul. The Leopards have uh, kind of flipped the script now on the foul count. It's against OCS in this quarter. Cameron drives all the way down, double teamed. Got it out to Ramming near the half line. Ramming works to the middle of the floor, comes to Cameron. Cameron's got Huffmeyer on him. Oh, the backdoor cut stolen away. 15th turnover on the Leopards. Here's Gray trying to make some space again. Can't get it done. But there is Huffmeyer rejected from behind by Ramming. Knocked down by Brown and no call. Watts across the top of the key. A minute 25 left. Has it lost into the backcourt. Naguero picks it up. They're going to say it was over and back. I thought it was tipped. Apparently it was not. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think it was. That's now 16 turnovers on the Leopards. So a minute 23 left, back to OCS basketball. Gray says, okay, I'll just shoot the three. This time it's off the mark. Taylor cannot come up with the rebound. Brown does, and they're going to wave <laughs> it off and say he traveled with it. Mm. Turnover right back to the Leopards. So Brown gets it into Watts. He'll go one-on-one -on -one with Brown across the timeline as we approach a minute left in the half. Leopard's still down by nine. Watts down to the corner for Taylor. Takes Owens baseline, double team, gets it in the lane. Cameron off the glass, can't get it to go. Aguero there, cleans it up and puts it in. Leopards within seven. 40 seconds left before halftime. 
Gray left wing, back up top to Ramsdale, right side to Owens. Into the corner, Brown down the baseline, back up to Ramsdale. Owens for three from the right wing, skips out no good. Another offensive board for Kyler Brown and got it to Gray for the dunk. Aguero double teamed, ramming down the lane, out into the corner. Taylor drives the baseline, off the glass, too strong. Gray with the rebound. Ramsdale pushes the other way with seven seconds left. Runs over Aguero, and Ramsdale picks up his second personal on the offensive foul. 5.8 seconds left before halftime, 22-11. OCS a nine-point lead, but the Leopards with the basketball. Watts gets it, races the other way. Gets it to Taylor with one second. Shot off and won't go. And the Leopards will find themselves down by nine here at halftime. 22-11, OCS with the lead. We're going to send it back up to JD. We'll take a timeout. Glenn and I will figure out our officially unofficial stats for the first half. Be back for more with your first National Bank halftime show here on KBLP Live. Hey, Lindsay community. My name is Christian Torres, and I am the minister for the Lindsay Church of Christ. We would like to invite you to come and worship with us on Sundays at 1045 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We're located at 1205 West Cherokee Street. Here at the Lindsay Church of Christ, you will find the truth of God's word spoken in love and a group of people who love God and one another. Do you have a Bible question? Well, we have a Bible answer. Come and worship with us and be edified at the Lindsay Church of Christ. If you have a hankering for the best barbecue in South Central Oklahoma, then get yourself down to the Meat Locker Barbecue in Lindsay. Every Monday, Thursday, and Friday, located just off of Highway 19, 106 Northwest 4. At the Meat Locker, we work hard to bring you the most consistent, delicious, slow smoked barbecue around at a price that won't break the bank. And don't forget, we cater too, and we'd love to do the cooking for your next event. So come see us or give us a call at 405-428-1198. And visit our new website, MeatLockerBBQOK.com, for the latest Meat Locker merchandise. We're proud to sponsor this broadcast of Lindsay Leopard Athletics and want to wish all the students, faculty, and staff a successful year. Curb your hunger at a new location right here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. From the owners of El Unico Taco Truck comes Casa 13. Casa 13 will bring a delicious variety of Mexican food. Stay tuned to their Facebook for sneak peeks. Following their grand opening on January 4th, Casa 13 will be located at 110 Northeast 4th Street, right here in Lindsay, Oklahoma. Go Leopards! At Rural Electric Cooperative, we're committed to providing electric power and opportunity to the many areas our members call home. That includes supporting youth programs that teach life skills and build character. With REC, you're more than a customer, you're a member owner. And that's why we're always working hard to provide you with the most dependable electric power possible. As a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, REC is dedicated to providing the best service possible and supporting the communities in our service area. SNH Tank Service is your choice for Lindsay owned and operated vacuum truck service. SNH Tank Service's fleet is equipped with transports, bobtails, pump and kill trucks rated up to 10,000 psi, plus hot oil units, rock trailers, frack tanks, mud and shell haul off pits, and soil farming. As Lindsay High School graduates, SNH is proud to support Lindsay schools and all of their student activities. SNH Tank Service would like to wish the Leopards and Leopardettes the best of luck in everything they do. Give SNH a call anytime, 24 7 at 405 756 3121. That's 405. 405- 756-3121. And remember, your phone starts our trucks. That's SNH Tank Service of Lindsay. The Shopper News Note isn't just another paper. The Shopper News Note is a weekly publication that arrives in your mailbox every Wednesday for free. The Shopper offers free Shopper Topper advertisements as well as news notes and classifieds. And everyone at the Shopper wishes the Lindsay Leopards good luck this season. Go Leopards!
Back here at Leopard Arena, the First National Bank halftime show. It is 20 to 11. The uh, Saints from Oklahoma Christian School ahead of the Lindsay Leopardettes by Lindsay Leopards by nine. 20 points, 11 of those belong to Luke Gray. The 6'8 senior has 11, including a three of four from the free throw line here in the first half. And then it's three apiece from James Huffmeyer and Carson Jones, two from Ben Ramsdale, a free throw from Junior Singenvyamva. Very good. If I say that enough times, I may actually get that down before this game is over with. Uh, and OCS, seven of ten from the free throw line, and you'll see why that's a big deal here in a minute. For the Leopards, uh, they are led by Bryce Cater. He's got five in the first half, two apiece from Isaac Cameron, Brody Ramming, and Emmanuel Aguero. The Leopards 0 for 2 from the free throw line. So OCS shoots 10 free throws in the first half. The Leopards shoot two. We're outscored by seven there. We're down by nine. So that kind of gives you an idea why, you know, you take those uh, fouls and free throws away, that makes a difference. The Leopards are minus three on the glass, 15-12. They were out-rebounded. Eight turnovers in that first half for OCS, but the Leopards with a dismal 16 turnovers in that first half. It was ugly from that standpoint. With that, we'll go talk to Glenn about shooting and see how ugly that may be. Yeah, it's ugly on both sides. Uh, uh, you'll see the Leopards actually end up shooting a higher percentage than OCS, but uh, – for OCS, they were 5 for 14 from two-point range, 1 for 9 from three-point range, for 6 for 23 uh, from the field for 26%. Uh, the Leopards, uh, 4 for 10 from two-point range, 1 for 7 from three-point range for a total of 5 for 17 for 29%. So... We didn't outshoot them by a whole lot, but uh, three percentage points. But, uh, you know, uh, we got to take care of the ball. Uh, yeah. The strategy was kind of working early, and then we got down 10. They started trapping, and when they started trapping, uh, it – Pardon my French, but it all kind of went to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> well, and you got to, again, if you look at it from that standpoint, if you give the ball away 16 times in a half, mm -hmm. uh, that's more than you want in a whole ball game. And you did it in a half, and you're still only down by nine. Mm -hmm. uh, you gave up free throws to, because you couldn't get the calls. Um, you know, it's again, I, I think the Leopards are in a really good place here. Again, if you take care of the ball second half. Yeah. And i got to hit some shots for sure. No. But, but you see how aggressive OCS is on defense, and uh, I think the Leopards, if they'll if they'll force them, I think they can start to pick up some fouls to start to pick up some uh, chances to go to the line. And you get some of these guys in foul trouble, then uh, maybe uh, the Leopards can climb back in this thing. But the Leopards do have the possession arrow. They'll get to start the uh, third quarter with the basketball. Casey, uh, you joined us late and missed it. The Leopardettes with a valiant effort against – the uh, fifth-ranked team in the state in uh, the uh, CCS Lady Royals, and the Leopardettes ended up losing that game by eight. And, uh, even, again, it was a tight ball game, 42-34, the final score. Uh, the Leopardettes uh, were within three with a minute 19 to go in that ball game. And uh, it was, uh, uh, it was a, a, a fight to the end and just cut up a little bit short. So the Leopardettes – have already uh, punched their ticket to tomorrow night in the Constellation bracket. They will take on Atoka at uh, 6 o'clock here at Leopard Arena. And uh, then we'll see if the Leopards will be uh, with them or if the Leopards will pull this one out here in the second half. Leopards may get to play, uh, uh, may get to skip tomorrow night. Maybe they get to go play Saturday night. But that has been your first National Bank halftime show here from Leopard Arena. Greg Peary, Glenn Shoemake here courtside. J.D. Scruggs, Andrew ESPN Plus. Lion is up running the camera. Kevin Scruggs running around up there somewhere. Brianna Miller back at our studios. Glad you're along with us here on our broadcast of Leopard Basketball presented by the First National Bank here in Lindsay. We did have... Uh, had some royalty, I guess, if uh, you want to look at it in here a little earlier. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Laney Venables, who plays for the Lady Royals of CCS, uh, is uh, on, uh, uh, of course, her dad might be uh, 
a pretty big deal since he's the head coach of the Oklahoma Center football team. I know he and makes a pretty big salary. He does make a really big salary. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Brent Venables was here earlier. And uh, Yeah, I got a picture. You did get a not, picture. Not with him. He, was, you, he you, was staring right at yeah. me, looking at me like, what kind of a stalker are you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leopards with the ball as Taylor will bring it up. Watts gets it left wing. Double team. Comes back left. Lost the handle. Got it back. Steps through. Tried to get it to Taylor. Ends up knocking it into the corner to Aguero. Back to Taylor and passes too tall. The Leopards start with a turnover. Ramsdale will bring it up for the Saints. Left side goes to Brown. Back to Ramsdale. Back over the right wing to Jones. Leopards stay in this 2-3 zone. They've been in the whole game. Ramsdale to the free throw line. The oh. lob and the jam for Luke Gray. Yeah, they screen the zone right there, and then Gray comes down the back side. We used to run the same thing to a guy that could dunk. Watts races the other end of the floor. Aguero takes it down. Out to Watts to Taylor for three. It rams out no good. Rebound pulled down by Singyumva. There you go. Gray tries the three from the left corner, and that's good. He's got 16, and OCS has started on a 5-0 run to start this quarter. Watts double teamed in the right corner, sends it all the way back out to Ramming. Quickly left side, Taylor. Three ball from Taylor on the way is short. Gray with a miss to Ramsdale, ahead to Jones. Jones to the baseline. Jumper skips across, no good. Backside rebound is pulled down by Singin Yamba, but tied up, and possession arrow belongs with OCS. Mm. Yeah, you got to block him out and get him on your back right there, and then that doesn't happen. Ramsdale inside to Junior, who puts it right up and in. Yeah. Everybody was so worried about Gray that this is a 7-0 run. Start this quarter for OCS. Here comes the double. Got it away to Cater right side. Cater drives all the way into the lane, puts up the left-hand scoop shot, missed it wide left. Quickly the other way, Brown out to Jones, inside to Gray. Stripped from behind, got it back, got to work around, and there's an NBA three from Jones that will not drop. Rebound Ramey. Quickly ahead, Taylor left wing. Down to the short corner for Aguero. Back out to Taylor, and timeout's going to be called by Coach Terry. So Leopards find themselves down by 16 with 5.54 left in the third. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back to Leopard Arena after this here on KBLP Live. Sooner Valve Repair in Lindsay would like to wish the Lindsay Leopards and Leopardettes all the best during this season. When need of a valve repair, come by Sooner Valve Repair at 106 Southwest 9th Street in Lindsay, Oklahoma, or call 405-756-1599. Good luck, Leopards, from Sooner Valve Repair in Lindsay. Josh Martin and everyone at TNW Tire here in Lindsay, Oklahoma, would like to wish the Leopards and Leopardettes the best of luck this school year. Five fifty-four left to go here in the third quarter, and CCS, excuse me, OCS has started on a seven-zero run here in the quarter. Leopards trying to cut into it here with the ball on their end of the floor as a timeout. Aguero across the top of the key goes to Cater on the right wing. Had cutters going through the lane. Cater dribbles to the elbow, picks it up again, lost it, got it back, now takes it right down the lane and has it rejected by Gray. I could see that coming yep. a mile away. I think everybody in here knew what was fixing yeah. to happen right there. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Taylor on the baseline, the inbounds. Watts gets it on the wing. Works back to Aguero. Back to Taylor left side. Takes Ramsdale baseline. Has to come back out to Ramming at the left elbow. Ramming turns around, takes Gray into the lane. Got it even in the air. Got it, but can't get the shot to drop. Gray with miss, the outlet to Jones, inside to Singanyamba underneath, got it stripped, ramming the steal. Nine turnovers on OCS. Taylor, top of the key, goes left side to Aguero. Back out to Taylor. Taylor Coach Terry changes the offense up, Aguero comes to get it, Cater gets it left side. Back to Watts, has it knocked out of his hands. 
Yeah, golly. Quick 18 hands. turnovers, and Taylor tips another pass, but Brown will come up with it. Taylor nearly knocked it away again. Brown gets it to Jones in the right corner underneath to Singanyamba. Back up top to Brown. Inside, Gray, and they're going to call a push underneath. I thought Gray just traveled with it there. But that goes on Bryce Cater, just his first. First team foul here in the third quarter. Watts and Ramming will check out. Cameron and Hernandez check back in for the Leopards. 4.30 left to go here in the third quarter. It's 27-11, 16-point lead for OCS. The lob to Gray at the left elbow. The jumper is up and good. He's got seven in the quarter. It's an 18-point lead. Taylor gets it from Cater, sends it to Aguero on the right wing. Again, Jones all over him. The lob intended for Aguero, missed. Junior to Jones, Jones to layup. 20-point lead. And they stay in the full court press. Under four to go. Ramsdale, all kinds of contact on Taylor, no whistle. Taylor in the mood, in the lane, got it blocked again. Cameron missed the first one, got that one. That one won't go. Hernandez comes away with that, got it to Taylor. Gray bats that one in the corner and then tracks it down. Four shots, point blank. We got to make those. Jones with an another NBA three, missed the shot. Creed Taylor comes away with the miss. Got it to Hernandez, out into the corner for Cater. Cater back out to Taylor, left wing, up to Hernandez. Excuse me, to Aguero. Aguero's three is off the mark. Ramsdale with the miss. In transition, got Junior at the other end of the floor. Singanyamba sends it out to Gray. His three ball will not drop. And again, they're coming up over the back. They just don't call anything, and Jones knocks down another three. His third three. It's 34-11. We go under three minutes left in the third. Yeah, the we trap go. comes and tried oh. to get it to Cameron in the lane, which was a great idea. Just missed the pass wide. Yeah, we're we're 0 for 10. How many turnovers we got this quarter? We got two this quarter. Oh, we're right. at that. Well, that one is three. I hadn't marked that one down yet. That's three this quarter. Yeah. But number 10, Hunter Russell, the five-seven sophomore, in for the Leopards. Number two, Eli Winters, back in for the Saints. Oh, and Hunter Russell picks Luke Gray's pocket. That is turnover number 10 against the Saints. Hernandez will bring it up for the Leopards. Two and a half left to go. Russell right wing. Goes baseline, pulls it back out, goes to Taylor up top for Aguero. Back to Hernandez left side. Three ball on the way. He's off the mark. Rebound pulled down by Carson Jones. He will push it ahead. Stops top of the key. Sends it over on the left wing to Owens. Owens drops in the three. 37-11, this is a 17-0 quarter for OCS. And another turnover. Winner to Jones, three, missed it. Cameron with the miss. Aguero trapped, turned it over. Gray the other way. Armando, Armando whistled for the foul, even though there was a forearm shiver <laughs> knocking him off. Team second. Aguero checks out as Watts returns for the Leopards. A minute 35 left in the third. Gray in the lane, can't get it to drop. Rebound pulled down by Cameron. Watts will bring it across. Hernandez, left side, Taylor. Taylor got away from his man across to Cameron underneath. Missed the shot. Gray on him twice and can't get a whistle. <laughs> got it up in the end. Up top, winner. Works to the right. Comes back up between the circles to Owens. To the right elbow. Brand sends it out to winner. That is uh, Ryland Jay in the lane, and 
Pass tipped and knocked out of bounds by the Leopards with 50 seconds left here in the third. Owens will send it up top to Winter. Back to Owens' left wing. Back over to Gray right side. Catch fire three short. Taylor with the miss. Races the other way. Stops right wing. Got Cameron in the lane. Cameron tried to go across lane to Hernandez. It's stolen away. They'll call a jump ball. Lepers with the possession arrow. So Taylor will end that on the baseline with 33 seconds left. Watts pass intended for Watts, I should say. Stolen away. 22 turnovers now on the Leopards. Gray in the lane. Takes a bump for Hernandez. Puts it up and in. Has an and one. Hernandez picks up his third. Third team foul on the Leopards. Yeah, they've got us tripled now. We've just had a hor we had a horrible quarter. We that, always we had always had one. one bad quarter. This one was not just bad. This one was horrible. Really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at this point, 19 to two, being outscored. Yep. Gray misses the free throw, but Ryland J, the offensive board. Owens fires a three, and it's good. 42-11. Excuse me, it's 42-13. Cameron down the lane. Got it. Cameron, the only one that got anything to go for the Leopards, and it'll be 42-15. OCS on top at the end of three. Back up to J.D. We'll take a timeout. We're back with the fourth quarter after this. You're listening to the live coverage of Leopard Basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. First National Bank of Lindsay is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Whether you're looking for a business loan, personal loan, or a certain type of deposit product, chances are we have what you're looking for. First National Bank, locally owned and operated, insured by FDIC, equal housing lender. This is Dr. Matt Shelton with Lindsay Family Dentistry. I'm a 1997 graduate of Lindsay High School and have been practicing dentistry in Lindsay since 2006. We welcome you to come by our dental practice so we can help you and your family with all your dental needs. We offer dental services for everyone at every age, from braces to aligners to crowns, bridges, dentures, and implants. Give us a call today at 405-756-4093 or stop by at 102 Southwest 7th Street and let us give you the healthy, beautiful smile always dreamed of. Well, this is third quarter was all OCS. We outscored the Leopards 22 to 4 in that quarter. And the Leopards have thrown in the white flag and they've got their second team on the floor. Make sure we get these guys in there as uh, Hunter Russell Picks the pocket of Junior Singing Yamba. Man, you got that down. I'm, I'm not yet, but I'm getting there. Drive down the lane, a strip. That is uh, Eli Curry. We'll head to the line. The foul called on number 11, Connor Owens. That's his second. Just the first foul called here in the fourth quarter. And Curry, very short with his first free throw attempt. Coach Weaver also sends his subs into the ball game. And also into the ball game, I didn't get this in there before. Number 14 is Maverick Dodson, the 5'9 sophomore. Curry with a second free throw attempt. That one's on the way and a little too strong. But Hernandez with the offensive board and can't get that to drop. Rebound is pulled down by Hudson Abel, number 15. I'll try to get these guys in here for OCS as well on their subs. Number 14 is Braden Weaver. He has the ball now. Sends it over on the right wing to uh, Hudson Struckle. Weaver again between the circles. Back over left side and steal by Russell. Trapped. 
Got it to Cameron. Three ball from Armando Hernandez is good. 42-18. OCS still with the lead. Struckle with the handle top of the key. Comes back over to Weaver. He'll work between the circles. Sends it over left side to Struckle. Goes to the high post to Abel. Abel down the lane. Misses the shot, but he'll draw the contact. Abel at 6'4", just a sophomore. Hernandez just picked up his fourth. Just the first team foul here in the fourth quarter, but on the shot will put the 6'4 sophomore at the line to shoot two. Misses that one. Abel's second free throw attempt after missing the first. And that one won't go either. Good block out from Dodson to Kimmel with the rebound. That's what you call blocking that shooter. Mm -hmm. Hernandez gets it from Dodson on the right wing. Gets a screen from Cameron. Goes to Cameron on the back door cut. Steps through a double team and he's fouled. And Isaac Cameron picks up the foul on number five, Jagger J. That's his first, second team foul on the Saints here in this quarter. So no free throws. In the lane, Hernandez with the reverse up and in. 42-20, Leopards down by 22. 6.15 left in the ball game. Jay on the baseline, nearly lost it, and he did. He did lost it. Turnover number 13 now yeah, on OCS. Ar Armando Hernandez dug that thing out of there. Hernandez decides to fire a three. That one skips out no good. Struggle with the miss in transition. Abel fouled from behind. Oh. And he'll get two more free throws here. The foul goes on number 10, Hunter Russell. That'll be his first, team second in the fourth quarter. And Abel will go right back to the free throw line. Glad he's okay. He took a pretty hard shot right there into the standard. Holding the goal, but. Misses the free throw. Winter returns and replaces Jagger J. Abel. Can't get that one to Dove. Now he does. It draws in. He's one for four from the line. Makes it 43-20. 23-point lead for OCS. 5.50 left in the ballgame. Hernandez works on Winter. Gets into the lane. Sends it out to Curry. Curry on the dribble, gets around Abel. Uh-oh, we got Cameron into the lane. Can't get it to drop. Abel will pull down the miss, though. And Abel, I think, may be on a mission right here. Got into the lane. Jumper won't drop, though, and Curry will come away with the miss. And I think they're going to get a number 20. That is a Preston McMinn with the foul. Abel is going to check out. Jay returns for OCS. Russell, top of the key, sends it to Curry left wing. Gets a screen from Cameron. Back to Dodson, right side over to Russell. Russell goes baseline, stops, puts up the 15-footer, won't drop. Rebound is still tipped around. Russell can't come up with it, and I think they're going to get Jay. Coming up over the back of Russell to knock that ball loose. Jagger J picks up his second. That's four, so one more. The Leopards will be shooting free throws. 5.09 left in the ball game. It's still 43-20. OCS in control. In the lane, Cameron got his man in the air, and he'll draw men's second foul and 15 foul, and Cameron will go to the line. Isaac Cameron's got six in the ball game. In fact, he is the Leopards' leading scorer. Yep. He'll get a couple of free throws here. And Cameron cannot get that one to drop. He's now 0 for 3 at the line. That's not like him. Jagger J checks out. Number one, Bryson Lynch, the sophomore, checks in. For OCS, as uh, Cameron will shoot a second free throw. And 
that one will drop in for him. 43-21, OCS on top as we approach five minutes left in the ball game. Winter sends it over to number 14 is Braden Weaver. Back inside, the floater up and good for Bryson Lynch. 45-21. Hernandez works on Winter. Takes him all the way to the baseline. Goes underneath the basket. We're going to get an offensive foul called on Armando, and that'll be his fifth. That boy fouls out more than <laughs> any player that we've got, and he doesn't even start. But he hustles and fights harder, as hard as anybody on the floor does. He'll foul out with 4.42 left in the ball game. He'll finish with five points here in this fourth quarter. And into the ball game is zero. That is Zach Howie, I believe. Is that right? That's right. Winter gets it down the baseline, lob it inside, up and good for Preston McMinn. 47 21. 425 left. Russell drives down, lobs it in for Dodson, double teamed back out to Russell right corner. Gets to the elbow, now needs some help. Gets it over to Howie. Howie lobs it up for Cameron, but stolen away. Here comes uh, Struckle the other way. Gets it over to Lynch. Up top, winner. Three ball on the way. No. Rebound knocked away from Curry and it's taken away. Lynch tries a three. That won't drop. Cameron comes away with that miss. He'll give it to Russell. Russell picked up by Jay. Works left. Gets the screen from Dodson. Goes back left, lost his footing, got it back. Dodson sends it over to Curry right wing. Curry steps for the double team, has all kinds of contact, and ramming, or excuse me, uh, Cameron will get fouled as uh, Preston McMinn picks up his third. Cameron back to the line. He has shot, so this will be his fifth and sixth free throws of the eight that the Leopards have taken tonight. And that one's short, too. Ryland J, number 22, and Brayden Weaver returned for OCS. And Isaac Cameron back to the line to attempt his sixth free throw attempt of the night. And gets that one to go. He's now two of six. 47-22, I thought. Maybe it's just 21. Yeah, they put the two up there. Yeah. Turnover OCS as I was looking for that. And number five, Will Lawrence, the freshman, checks in. Cameron will check out. 3.22 left in the ball game. This one got blown open in that third quarter when the Leopards were outscored 22-4 to four as Russell with the tough three over winner and he knocks it down. What a shot from Hunter Russell. 47-25, winner drives down, dumps it to Lynch in the corner, and Russell with the steal. He'll have the run out layup. It can't get it to go. Weaver comes away with the miss, and then... Travel with the other end, Russell. I think he needed about one more step. He tried to lay it up almost too far away from the glass, but he knew those guys were chasing him, and he actually likes like he might have rolled an ankle there too. And what? Yeah. The officials conferring about something here. Not sure what that was about, but with 2.55 left, Leopards will have the ball back. Dodson will inbound to Russell to bring it up. Leopards are down by 22. Russell top of the key, comes over to Howie left side, gets a screen from Lawrence. Gets it to Dodson. Dodson works to the corner and then slips and falls. Ball is loose and Leopards turn it over. And run out layup at the other end for Jagger J. 49-25. 2.20 left in the ball game. Russell gets to the free throw line, elevates, knocks it down from there. Wow. Good shot from Hunter Russell. He's taken a couple of tough shots and got them to go. 
Cuts it back to 22. Lob it all the way to Lynch in the left corner. Inside goes to Jay. Knocked loose. Got it back. Work it back around a winner on the right wing. He's triple teamed. Jay gets it. Back up top to Weaver, and Weaver traveled with it. So we go under two minutes left in the ball game, and Leopards get the ball back. Dodson will inbound to Russell. Hunter brings it across. Lost it, got it back. Comes to Howie left side. Gets the screen from Lawrence. Goes to Dodson on the right wing. Into the right corner, Russell. Three ball from Russell on the way, no. Lynch with the miss. He'll push it the other way in transition. Good play right there. I think that was Russell <laughs> knocked that one away from Jay who wanted to lay up right there. Oh, we're going to oh, call that an intentional, intentional foul. Or you're going to call that an intentional foul. Unbelievable. That's crazy. <laughs> foul called on Russell was his second. So a couple of free throws in the ball here for Ryland Jay. He misses the free throw. <laughs> Second free throw for Jay. That one will not go either. OCS will get the ball back since those were technical free throws. <sighs> and in and bound on the baseline is Struckle who checked back in. Lynch catch fire three from the right corners up and good. 52-27. Twenty-five point lead for OCS. Russell around the Dodson screen since it's the Howie left side. Howie back to Dodson. Tries to get around Abel. Can't get it done. Russell double team goes back to Dodson. Three corner corner from the three on the way. Abel comes away with the miss. McMinn on the handle. All the way to the left side for Struckle, nearly threw it away. Back over to a wide open Lynch in the right corner for three. That one's off. The offside rebound taken down by Jay, though. And then Will Lawrence comes away with the steal underneath. And now Zach Howie will bring it up for the Leopards with 45 seconds left. Works left, lost it. And the layup at the other end for Hudson Struckle. 54-27 with 30 seconds left in the ball game. The Leopards finding out real quick is again another tough three from Hunter Russell. Three Hunter Leopards finding out why uh, OCS is the number one team in the state. Lob it in the lane for Abel, blocked by Lawrence. No call, but they will get the foul on Jagger Jay's rebound and put back. Foul called on uh, Eli Curry. And and one coming up here. And that won't go, but nobody bothered to block out. I think everybody thought it was a two-shot foul. Nobody moved, and it ends up being an offensive rebound, and that'll do it. 56-30, the final score, a 26-point win for OCS. So they will move into the finals 7-30 Thursday, or excuse me, Saturday night. This is Thursday night. And Leopards will play tomorrow night, and they will play Atoka. And we'll uh, lay all that out for you and uh, give you our broadcast schedule for tomorrow coming up right after this timeout. This is Leopard Basketball presented by the First National Bank on KBLP Live. First National Bank of Lindsay is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's broadcast. Whether you're looking for a business loan, personal loan, or a certain type of deposit product, chances are we have what you're looking for. First National Bank, locally owned and operated, insured by FDIC, equal housing lender. For all your construction needs, Give Brad Taylor a call with BNS Construction at 1 405 428 0039. BNS Construction specializes in concrete pads, sidewalks, and metal buildings of all sizes. Call Brad today for a free estimate. 
The crew at BNS Construction would like to wish the Leopards a safe and successful season. Go Lindsay! For all your oil field electrical needs, call Michael Chirac with SOS Electrical. SOS is a family owned business that specializes in oil field, industrial, and commercial electrical construction and maintenance. No job is too big, no job is too small. Give SOS a call at 1 405 428 1944 today. Good luck, Leopards! Hey Leopard fans, we at American Exchange Bank are excited for another year where we get to continue our support of Lindsay Leopard Athletics. Join us in cheering on our Leopards or catch all the action right here on KBLP Live. American Exchange Bank at 402 South Main has been the bank for the Leopards for nearly 100 years. Come see us if you're looking for a different banking experience. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. At American, we are Leopards supporting other Leopards. The team at Streamline Services contributes a great deal of their success to hard work, experience, and above all, a positive health and safety protocol. There is every reason they should be your next phone call for any of your oil and gas swabbing needs. Give Austin Smith a call today at 1-405-756-7763 to see how Streamline Services can help with your project while ensuring safety and professionalism without sacrificing quality work being done. Everyone at Streamline Services wishes the best of luck to everyone at Lindsay Public Schools this year. Go Leopards! If you need local trash pickup with quality service at a fair price, call Red Dirt Waste Services today at 580-432-5697. Red Dirt Waste Services is locally owned and operated, offering household, residential, and light commercial trash pickup in Lindsay and surrounding areas, including Ellick, Bradley, Bray Doyle, Cox City, Elmore City, and Foster. Red Dirt Waste Services does household cleanouts too, and they offer 96-gallon poly carts and dumpsters, bagged, loose, or heavy items doesn't matter they'll come get it red dirt waste services even offers valet service so you don't even have to take your trash to the curb schedule your weekly pickup today by calling 580-432-5697 stop paying more than you have to for quality dependable and locally owned trash pickup call red dirt waste services at 580-432-5697 that's 580-432-5697 Back here in uh, Lindsay Leopard Arena as we get ready to wrap up the boys' matchup. And, again, uh, everybody here figuring out uh, real quickly why OCS boys are the number one team in the state as uh, they have improved to 21-2 and two on the season. 56-30 their win over the Leopards tonight. They were led by their 6'8 senior, Luke Gray. He ends up with 20 points, nine rebounds tonight to lead the way for all scorers. Uh, in fact, he was the only player in double figures. Uh, Carson Jones finished with nine in the game. Uh, then it was, uh, get this down the road here. We go to uh, six points for Connor Owens, five for Bryson Lynch, uh, four points from Jagger J, three from James Huffmeyer, and then a two apiece from uh, Ben Ramsdale, from Hudson Strickle, from uh, Preston McMinn, and also from Junior Senganyamva. I won't miss saying that name. One free throw from Hudson Abel. And uh, I've got uh, OCS 8 of 18 from the charity stripe. Mm -hmm. I did not shoot well from there, but they shot a bunch of them. Uh, the uh, Leopards are led by two players, both in off the bench. Isaac Cameron ends up with eight, along with Hunter Russell, who had eight all in that fourth quarter, had a couple of threes as well. Five points from Armando Hernandez, also five from Bryce Cater. And then two points from Brody Ramming and two from Manuel Aguero rounds out to scoring for the Leopards, who went just two of eight from the charity strike. Leopards were minus 10 on the glass. They were out-rebounded 31-21. And the number that glares at you, 25 turnovers in the game, 16 of those in the first half, and, of course, 16 then total for uh, OCS in the game. With that, we go talk about the shooting numbers with Glenn. Yeah, uh, OCS shot much better the second half. Uh, they were actually 15 for 28 from from the floor in the second half. But uh, for OCS from two-point range, 15 for 29 for 
on the game and five for 22 or 23 percent from three-point range uh, so from the field they were 20 for 51 for 39 percent uh, for Lindsay uh, shot about the same the second half as they did the first half which was not good uh, eight for 25 from two-point range is where they end up 32 percent uh, four for 17 from three-point range for 24 percent so they finished 12 for 42 or 29 percent so uh, not a good shooting night for the Leopards no well, it was not and again so the Leopards uh, go to a 12 and 13 on the season but uh, hey Again, this is playoffs. Yes, you, now you have to win more ball games, but you can still get to that state ball. Mm -hmm. Just as e I'm just the same way. It's just a longer route. Yeah. But uh, now every game is a win or go home, uh, unfortunately. So for that, that means the Leopards again will move to tomorrow night. That game will be at 7:30. They will take on Atoka. Uh, Atoka defeated uh, Marietta. Uh, earlier this afternoon, 51-47 down at Kingston. So Atoko will be here to take on the Leopards at 7.30. They will also be taking on the Leopardettes at 6 o'clock as uh, the uh, Atoka defeated Frederick 61-25 earlier t as well. So sets up a, a girls matchup between uh, CCS and Kingston. Kingston beat Marietta uh, down in Kingston tonight. So Kingston and CCS, Marietta will play uh, the OCS girls who uh, defeated the Comanche Lady Indians earlier today. Mm -hmm. And then on the boys' side, uh, of course, uh, OCS will take on the winner of Kingston and Frederick Boys, which I did not have a chance to get looked up before here before this game. But, uh, again, the Leopards will take on Atoka. And Comanche will play the loser of that Kingston-Frederick game at 2.30 uh, here tomorrow afternoon. So with that, uh, we will uh, step aside and get out of here before uh, – Mr. Ferguson decides to lock us in here. Yeah, but, turn the uh, lights out. Yeah, but uh, uh, again, a couple of losses for the Leopards tonight, but uh, nothing to hang your head about considering the uh, level of competition you were playing tonight. Girls take on the number five team in the state and, and lose only by eight, had it down to three with uh, just a minute to go in the game. So I'm mm -hmm. uh, very impressed with the Leopards tonight. And the Leopards, again, uh, you're talking to the number one team in the state, so uh, you're going to – you know, that's that's your first meeting with them. I think if you met them again, it would be a whole different ball game. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, see you back here tomorrow night. Again, we'll be here uh, just before 6 o'clock with our uh, pregame. Uh, we'll start our uh, commercial run about uh, 25 till, and we'll be on with our pregame at a quarter to 6 for the Leopardettes and Atoka. And uh, then we'll do the boys game after that. Glenn, good job tonight. Uh, you too. And uh, we'll see you here tomorrow night. And, and mm -hmm. also to J.D., and Andrew, the guys up top, appreciate all the work they did. Brianna Miller back at our studios. My name is Greg Peary. We're going to say goodnight from Leopard Arena. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. And uh, we'll do this all over again. Until we see you then, remember, whatever you do, always be a good sport. Get your game day, or any day, off to a great start with Hot Mess Coffee at 213 South Main in Lindsay. Hot Mess Coffee Co. offers coffees, lattes, teas, and other tasty beverages, plus great food, too. Good luck to the Lindsay Leopards from Hot Mess Coffee Co. and Java House Realty at 213 South Main in Lindsay. At Rural Electric Cooperative, we're committed to providing electric power and opportunity to the many areas our members call home. That includes supporting youth programs that teach life skills and build character. With REC, you're more than a customer, you're a member owner. And that's why we're always working hard to provide you with the most dependable electric power possible. As a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, REC is dedicated to providing the best service possible and supporting the communities in our service area.